Hi, I'm McKay Featherstone. I head up global innovation at Thor Industries. That means that we're working on future advancements to help make RVing easier for all of the Thor family of companies. We are primarily based here in the U.S., but we work on a global basis, so we work very closely with uh, our friends at EHG and all of the brands in Europe. I'd like to start off by showing you a Harbinger battery electric motorhome chassis. We believe this is the best large-scale, medium-duty, purely electric chassis that's coming to market. Uh, and there's some very specific reasons why we're a big believer in this chassis to the point where uh, we have a great relationship with Harbinger. And in fact, we've invested in the company because we want them to be successful and for our companies to be building more sustainable battery electric motorhomes. This product, uh, as you will see, it is designed from scratch as an electric chassis. That means we're not retrofitting uh, an ICE chassis, but actually designing from scratch. So the battery modules fit completely within the rail. They fit within the rail from a side and from a top and bottom. Uh, and we're able to fit many packs uh, to be able to get the range that customers expect. That can happen because of Really, the unique design that you'll see here towards the rear, where they've been able to package that motor and that gearbox into a very tight space. So it's using less space with a very efficient design. That means there's more space for gear and for tanks and everything else that makes a great motor home. Uh, it also is a lower profile chassis. That means you're going to have a more aerodynamic design because similar to many motor homes in Europe, you have that lower profile. Uh, it means more range when you're EV towing. There's an additional major point of differentiation on this, which I can demonstrate for you, and that is drive-by wire. So this system, there's not a mechanical linkage. It's actually drive-by wire. You'll see here what that means. So it's a really easy system. As you can see, I'm just easily turning. In fact, I'm doing that with one finger to be able to turn that wheel and a very large uh, turning angle overall on this chassis. So you end up with something that's just much easier to drive. Uh, and you could actually change that ratio so a really tight turning radius and nice and stable on the highway with the drive-by wire. So it's from scratch design. Uh, it's got batteries integrated, so you've got more storage capacity. You've got a lower profile for better aerodynamics and a really easy driving experience. And we're looking forward to continuing to develop uh, and bring this together with our partners at Harbinger. We're showcasing here investments that Thor Industries is making in automation. Automation is a broad topic. It's really about improving our processes so we can build a better quality product, so we can uh, improve the efficiency of our operations overall. So we're taking a very targeted approach of where we are automating. In the example that we're showing here, this is a piece of equipment that's just started producing production parts, uh, and it is using a robotic system that is cutting and kitting EGS. So this is an example. This is a much smaller robot. The actual production version is very large, but these systems are very accurate, and by putting uh, a custom-designed end of tooling arm on this, 
we can do things like pick up pieces of electro-galvanized steel. So in a U.S. construction, in the sidewall, you have steel backers. Uh, that's a piece of steel, so when the cabinets go on the wall, they get screwed in and they don't fall out of the wall. We're constantly cutting those pieces of steel. By doing that more precisely in an automated fashion, there's actually less waste, so it's more sustainable. Uh, we can have a better throughput, and we can then provide an actual kit of parts to the operator just in time, so there's less work in process. It's more efficient overall, uh, and it's doing it with a piece of equipment uh, that has been built and designed by the Thor team and is available to all of our operating companies to use in their facilities. So the Thor Innovation Team is showcasing here something we're really passionate about, and that's supporting the customer after the sale of the product. It's delivering content to the customer so they can find the answers themselves. That's both easier if you're on the road, you're having a problem, easy access to finding the information you need. And for many customers, they really don't want to have to pick up the phone uh, to call a customer service rep. First and foremost, we'll show you how that works. So in DIY, do it yourself, better customer support experience. But we're also powering our customer support agents so it's easier for them to have that human powered interaction. So they're prepared. So when you call in, they've got all the information they need at their fingertips. Both of those are driven by content, by having the actual information how do we make RVing easier? We're talking about a knowledge base of information that can be delivered in an app format. So we're showing an app system. This is actually a common app with EHG. So many of the brands from EHG have this app in the marketplace today. And we've really built out a really a full support suite that includes not just the owner's manuals that are specific to that model, but actually search functionality so you can go into that knowledge base, you can ask about a water heater or whatever you're interested, how does it work? How do I maintain it? How do I troubleshoot it just through the app experience? And if that doesn't get you the answer that you need, you can actually then enable a live chat. So now you can get uh, a connection to a human. And as you'll see here, that same content is powering a customer experience. So you can see the customer uh, through the app, typing in, they're connected to a customer service rep, but that customer service rep knows your history. So you don't have to call in, repeat all of that information. They're actually going to know and have summarized who is that person I'm talking to, uh, what's their vehicle, and the history of the interaction for them. So it's more efficient from customer support, but it's actually better for the end customer because They've got uh, the content in their fingertips, and we'd actually provide status information and updates from them as well. So we're able providing more information more efficiently to the customer. All of our brands are really excited about this, and we're making investments for these digital platforms. That's about the app experience for customer support, but here at the open house in Elkhart, we're also introducing uh, in the US market the world's first car play implementation of a connected vehicle. What does that mean? That means with the EHG connected vehicle system, that information about the caravan, or if it's a motorhome, about the upfit in the motorhome, for any vehicle that is car play enabled, so that might be uh, the motorhome screen, or it might be the vehicle that you're towing with, we can now pull up onto that actual screen, just like a CarPlay works uh, for other apps, information on tire pressure, uh, information on the status of the vehicle, and you're doing that while you're driving. So you're not, you're not messing with your phone, you don't need another screen or some third party system. It's now been integrated with and seamlessly pulls up that information with any vehicle that's CarPlay enabled. Really excited about it. It's another example of innovation that's just making it easier for the customer to enjoy RVing. Uh, and then finally, for our digital experiences, uh, we're showcasing something that we've already launched in the U.S. market, and that is Starlink that's been integrated from the factory in the vehicle. So we have multiple brands here in the U.S. who have launched with Starlink uh, with their high-performance version. 
This is actually a Starlink system that works in motion. So while you're traveling, say in a motorhome, you can have Wi-Fi enabled for that entire vehicle. So it's really fast bandwidth anywhere. Doesn't matter if there's cell connectivity or not. So it's solving that connectivity problem. In the US market, You know, given how huge America is, this is a big challenge for our customers. And we have the technology uh, and we're first to market with Starlink. Um, we'll continue to expand that because we know that staying connected while you travel is a pain point today. And we're finding solutions for that for all of our customers. Hello, I'm Brian Melton, uh, G General Manager here at Airstream. We are at the Thor Open House and we're gonna walk through a couple of the new products we have. Uh, the Pottery Barn right behind me is a special edition. We've had it for two years. This is its third year, going on its third year. Uh, still an incredible product for us, um, but we also have at the show today a special edition REI uh, that's new. Um, it's a 20 foot range and then the Trade Win, which we just launched at the uh, Hershey Super Show uh, last month. So the three new models that we have here. Um, we're gonna show you the Pottery Barn here today. The Pottery Barn is a 28 foot Airstream. It was used in conjunction with uh, Pottery Barn designers. So both Airstream designers and Pottery Barn designers collaborated on this particular new unit. The theme is of kind of a West Coast uh, Highway 1 theme is what we kind of went after on this particular one using some of the more popular items from Pottery Barn. You'll see some touches that they have, the sconces. Uh, this is a, a, in, a, a copy of one of their actual sofas that they have in their showrooms. Um, we do have the new Airstream smart system in this. So the unit does have a touchscreen. It does come with Wi-Fi. You can control a lot of the different items, temperature, the lights, the awning. Um, you can see the battery level. You can see the tank levels all through your app. So you can do that all remotely as well. Um, inside you have a nice uh, stainless steel farm style sink. Uh, windows throughout, nice panoramic window in, in the back, uh, hard, hardwood covers over a beautiful curved wood interior that opens up to more storage. You have a three burner gas cook cooktop, optional either convection microwave oven or LP oven. Uh, comes a chef block, so for all your knives, um, you have a place to put all of your um, seasoning for cooking. A nice cooktop comes, or excuse me, uh, over the sink is a nice wooden block. Um, also, in this area, there's another wooden block. None of that's currently on there, um, but there's another wooden block that is right inside here. So the wooden block stays on top of this piece here, and you can actually open this up, open this up, cut away on the wooden block, and scrape your uh, whatever left over into the, into the uh, garbage. And the Pottery Barn comes with a lot of Pottery Barn goods, right? Blankets, outdoor seating, an outdoor bar uh, connects to this window right here. So um, in flatware, plates, mugs, all the different things to make it kind of fully unique. Also unique to Pottery Barn, a uh, solid hardwood table. This pushes down into another sleeping area. So you have a sleeping area here. Uh, someone could also sleep on the couch. Um, but then you have a queen or twin option in the rear. Shower, wardrobe, eight foot cubic refrigerator. Um, beautifully appointed bathroom, smart TVs. The whole thing that opened the door of the shower. There you go. Shower with clothesline. Wardrobe with a full length mirror. Uh, we have our Vista View windows with these nice pleated uh, drapes. Everything throughout this unit was really well done design. And again, it's great when you have um, a company like Pottery Barn and their designers working in, in unison with uh, our designers. So you get to kind of see the end result of that, uh, that collaboration. Hi there, I'm Mike Kaiser with Coachman Class A Division. 
uh, division of Forest River. Uh, what we're looking at here is an all new uh, segment for us in a class A market. Um, the design pretty much came from the UK. What we tried to do here was take something that uh, uh, shrink it down about a foot from the from the ceiling height, narrow it up about five to six inches on you know on the side walls, and give it a much more lower profile. Um, as you can see, it's, this is different from anything else in the industry that we're offering right now. And if you take a look, if you could pan up just on the seat, the difference in the roof heights is considerably different. Uh, we're running uh, two thirteen five uh, GE uh, air conditioners with low their low profiles uh, as well as soft start. Uh, we did not skimp on anything with this motorhome. Uh, Gerard box awning. We went with uh, um, full size Velback mirrors that are uh, very European design, uh, full aluminum wheels. And one of the thing, one of the other things that makes this very unique for us is that this is on a 16,000 pound um, Ford, Ford V8, 7.3 Ford V8, uh, which gives us a ton of carrying capacity. What that does for the end user is be able to uh, tow 8,000 pounds. Yeah. What we really love about this motorhome is that uh, the drivability, uh, especially for um, somebody, that, whether they're taller or shorter, it accommodates both, and it has a very SUV type feel uh, going down the road. So we feel like uh, we hit a home run with that just to, for the women that typically are intimidated about driving a Class A motorhome. This this you know checks all the boxes for them. Um, as you can see from the outside coming into the inside, the transition of that. Uh, a lot of manufacturers will skimp on the inside. You only give me the exterior look. I think when you come inside here, you get the Euro cabinets, uh, the Euro chairs up front. This is a floating lagoon table that accommodates, which these seats are also belted. Uh, 13 and a half inch screen up front. So everything that you're going to need there. Um, positive latch and soft close on all of your cabinetry, including your overheads. Uh, industry first is having a, a hood vent inside a, a Class A motorhome. Um, again, unique to us. Um, when you're looking at, we did not skimp on storage. Again, this is our very first one, so there we, there are going to be some some modifications, uh, some improvements, if you will. Uh, this will be a pullout. This is our pantry now. This will be going to a pullout. Uh, on top of that, all of our other uh, huge hanging storage on both sides. But we're going to put some shelving in there uh, so you can uh, do some folding clothes. And the amount of countertop space is huge in this side of the motorhome. This motorhome is only 27 foot long. We're calling it our 25 EU. So it checks all the boxes on, um, you know, your state and national parks in northern, you know, North America. Little things like this, creature comforts and home. You know what? We're trying to do more and more of stuff that's, uh, that's functional for our customers. Um, king size bed, obviously another TV back here. Here's what's unique about this as well is the size of bathroom you get. Okay. Our target audience is probably going to be that person that wanted a smaller class A has the feel of, you know, the creature comforts of an A, B and a C, um, especially that B buyer that's, uh, maybe they were just weekend warriors, but they want to spend a little bit more time in them, but they need a bigger bathroom. They need more sleeping area. They don't want to make up a Murphy bed, you know, and that kind of stuff. So this is just a very user, small, user-friendly motorhome. That's the game old. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think? Oh, it's a... Yeah, well, we'll round out with love. Yeah, okay. Again, this is Mike Kaiser with Coachman Class A Division. I hope you enjoyed your tour. Um, boy, anything and any kind of information you'll be looking for, please contact us at 574-825-8651. That's my direct number. Uh, you know what? We're very excited about this project and this piece and welcoming this segment to the industry. I'm Brad Gage. I'm the director of engineering at Crossroads RV, and I'm here to show you the Crossroads Backroads unit, uh, model 24RBS.
This is a unit that we built exclusively for the open house show with uh, several new features that uh, we've never done before that we wanted to try. So starting out, we, we built all the sidewalls with an exterior layer of ASDO. Uh, we used the mirror solar reflective windows on it. We've got a large pass-through storage designed into it, aluminum framed. We are laminating construction all the way around. It's got an extra large pass-through, a 22-inch door, which is the largest size in this uh, class for a trailer. We have the Gerard uh, on-demand water heater. We have a built-in outside kitchen with locking drawer glides. So the drawer locks. We go around the outside. We have power jacks and lights at each, above each jack. If you're setting up at night, everything will be lit. Even the terminations are lit at night. We have a custom convenience center that has everything you need listed right on the convenience center here to tell you how to set up for filling your tank. Uh, connecting city fill when you're at the campground, winterizing your unit, sanitizing your tank. It's all printed right here on your convenience center where you need it. We have enclosed termination valves and dedicated hookup storage. The valves are in here, so they're protected. We have an independent suspension from Norco, it's a Norco frame, all-terrain tires, and those are 16 inch. We have a ladder prep on the back. Pike. Coming inside, we have a pet-friendly screen door on the entry. We have European-style cabinets in the kitchen, solid surface countertops throughout, bathroom, kitchen, uh, on the dinette. You got a U dinette, seats up to four people. You have a large bathroom back here with a uh, 30 by 40 shower. Upgraded surround, skylight, lots of storage, medicine cabinet with more storage on this side. Twelve volt refrigerator, and up front is is what makes this particular unit really special. Uh, we've got the Go Power power board. This is a built-in inverter, three solar charge controllers, and three 300 amp hour batteries. On the roof, we have six 200 watt solar panels, so a total of 1,200. Right now, on our monitor, you can see we have 900 amp hours left. We are running the AC, uh, all the lights, the 12 volt refrigerator, the outside refrigerator, and uh, we have a net loss of 11 amps to run all that because the solar is recharging the batteries. And we are not plugged into 110 right now. We are strictly running off of that inverter. My name is Tim Cress. I'm the product manager for uh, Hampton, uh, one of the destination models for Crossroads RV. This is our new 390 PVL, panoramic view with a loft. Uh, new this year is our new front cap with a full view windshield. It is seven feet wide by four feet tall, providing those customers a lot of space to view the outdoors. If you walk with me on this side, Hampton builds a fully laminated trailer. Uh, side walls are laminated, end walls are laminated. Uh, we do have three 15,000 BTU air conditioners on all Hamptons. Uh, 
the Hampton, you'll notice this Hampton has several panoramic uh, windows on the, on the campsite and no slides. The reason we do no slides on this unit is because most of our owners like to incorporate some kind of deck or a patio on this side and enclose a three season uh, area here. Uh, you do on this one, you do have two large awnings to cover your camp space uh, that will provide, you know, that shade and rain. But come on inside. So on the inside, uh, you have all the amenities of you would in the, as you would in your house. You have a full 3.7 cubic foot uh, oven with a cast iron grates on the range here. You have a full 30 inch over the over the microwave over the counter range or microwave. Sorry, uh, you have a full wa uh, pantry. Your eating area here is in the kitchen. You have four bar stools that pull out where you can sit. In the living room, you have your nice L-shaped sofa with your TV on the televator that goes up and down. So you can view the outside when you want it out. Uh, if you notice, your blinds are all, the upper blinds are all electric. So these are on, on a remote because you can't reach those. The lower ones are manual, but they're all blackout. Uh, to the back of the coach, you have a loft with two bunks back here. And below this, you have your master's, master bathroom. Your master bathroom is going to have a large 48-inch shower with a fiberglass pan. It is going to be prepped for washer-dryer. Do you have washer-dryer capability here? A uh, nice large vanity top here. We are using the suburban on-demand water heater, so that will give you endless hot water. Um, above me here is the loft area, and on the other end of the coach, that's the loft area there. And on the other end, you have another loft area with three separate bunk beds uh, with a nice spiral staircase that goes up. You do have, a, below this, you do have the 18 cubic foot residential refrigerator Tons of storage in here. The loft above. And then your master suite. Your master suite here, you have a full king size bed. You have your nice panoramic view. So you can view it all from your master suite. You have a uh, a vanity over here, or a workstation, whichever one you choose. And then a TV in the bedroom as well. P location for a TV in the bedroom. Yeah, that's the 390. Hi, I'm Jared Graver with Dynamax. Uh, today here we have the ISADA 5 Series with a whole new package on it. The Isada 5 Series is on the Ram 5500 chassis with the Cummins 6.7 turbo diesel engine. It also is four-wheel drive. We've had customers who wanted it to be beefed up a bit, ground clearance. So we put 44s on with this package. We're calling it the Extreme Package. 44s with the black wheels, full liquid spring package as well from a suspension standpoint. Custom black grille, and then we also added the buck stop front bumper as well to it. So uh, great look to it. Bit money, bit of money for that option, but it's totally worth it. Turned out great. Let's step inside, look at a few of the features. We're at just over 33 feet long with this floor plan. It is our number one seller because it opens up so well. You have a front living area slide giving you two different seatings, and then a bedroom side with a queen bed that'll go out uh, towards the rear with a nice wardrobe in the back. In the bathroom here, a big selling point is the just the, the size of it. So you step in here, you see how long it is. The shower itself is unique. It's 36 inches by 36 inches. So it's a very open floor plan. You get a lot of space for a 33 footer. And then with Dynamax, we, you know, we're known for our awesome paint jobs, but then the fit and finish on the inside is going to match that. All of our components are update, update graded as well. So you're going to have lithium batteries. You're going to have lots of solar up on the roof 
with our Explorer package specifically, you're going to have 400 amp hours worth of lithium, 1,000 watts, 950 watts of solar up on the roof there, dual pane windows, and you're truly a four season coach at that point. So that's the ISADA 5 and the new package, the extreme package. Thanks for watching. Hi guys, I'm Tony Young, General Manager of East to West Motorized Division. Today we're going to take a look at our brand new Tala. Tala is a uh, B plus Class C uh, motorized brand brought to you by East to West. 25 feet 11 inches in length, built on the Ford all-wheel drive transit chassis, featuring a, a 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine. Let's take a peek at this. The first thing we have up front is a molded fiberglass, one-piece molded fiberglass front cap that's painted. And moving down the side of the coach, you'll notice side view backup cameras, two-inch walls with Asdell composite backing, square frameless windows that have integrated uh, day and night shades on this coach. If you want to, we'll venture to the rear of the coach here and show you this massive pass-through storage compartment. I tease my wife and tell her this is the mother-in-law quarters. That joke doesn't go over real well at home, but you'll see it's large pass-through storage with entry on the back side. And on top of that, we've got a great graphics package put together here and a legless awning by Gerard. If we want to go inside the coach at this point, it's a little wet out here today, so we've been tracking in some mud here. I apologize about that, but in... Uh, Typical east-west fashion, we're building this with very limited options, trying to make it as easy as possible for our dealer base to order, for us to keep up with supplies. But one thing that we do have here that nobody else is really featuring on the all-wheel drive transit is an actual bunk up above here. So you can easily get one kid up here. It's a nice storage area if you want to put luggage or supplies. We have a cab over cargo safety net here, also the clips in there and on the side of the uh, wings here. Solid surface countertops, 12 volt TV, a nice jackknife sofa. And again, one thing that I love about this coach is these windows with the uh, uh, frameless windows with the integrated day and night shades. You don't have to have a valance. So it gives it a much more residential look and just ease of operation here. It's just really nice. Take a look at that. Coming on into the kitchen, tons of countertop space for a class B plus or C with a countertop extension here, solid surface convection microwave oven, and a nice 12 volt fridge, okay, with a freezer. If we go into the rear of the coach, I'll, I'll let you go back there. This is the 23 TK, which stands for twin king. We've got two twin beds that easily convert into a king. Tons of overhead storage back there. We really utilize as much of that space possible. You're going to need it in this size of a unit. Again, as we venture to the back, these dual doors open. There's a catch magnet up top. So now you can gain some privacy in the bathroom here. And of course, you're not going to be able to see in here while I'm back here. But this open catches on. Now you've got a porcelain toilet, nice radius shower, and it kind of gives you an ensuite bathroom feel back here. Thanks for coming to see us today. This is the East to West um, Tala 23TK. We're at the 2023 Al Alcarts dealer open house in Alcart, Indiana. Um, sitting with us today is Don Clark, president of Grand Design RV. Don, thank you very much for taking your time with us. Well, thank you for having me. Um, one of our first questions is, what is the most successful class of trailer from Grand Design within the three segments? Yeah, we we um, we have our Imagine uh, travel trailer that is the number one selling laminated travel trailer in the industry. We're very proud of that. Uh, that would probably be our largest. We do have a new travel trailer that we are have developed, and it's a more of an entry level, but still with with some fine appointments to it, called the Transcend, and we believe that's going to be a very very strong seller as well. Um, 
we also are the makers of the number one selling toy hauler travel trailer momentum that's number one in its class so really those would be the three attacking the the major segments in the market cool with those successes credit to grand design uh who um who's grand design's uh, target audience yeah it depends on brand um it goes from from brand to brand for instance our our, our, I'll just take product in general, our solitude, we happen to be sitting in a solitude fifth wheel. This is aimed at the extended um, camper, the one that uh, maybe lives in Detroit, Michigan, and they're, they're tired of the winter and they want to come down south. This is a perfect vehicle to do that in. So it's more of an extended stay. Um, and it's number two in its class in luxury high-end uh, fifth wheels. Um, and that's a major segment in our industry now. Um, more of a volume piece is our reflection fifth wheel. And then I'll go into trailers if that's okay. Yeah. Our reflection is is number two in all fifth wheels, um, and it is um, a ma- attacking a major uh, profit center for for the dealers. It's a very popular and volume oriented product. Uh, and then Momento. You heard the momentum name earlier. Yes. I referenced it, the number one selling toy hauler trailer. Momentum fifth wheel is by far um, uh, the the strongest toy hauler fifth wheel. It's number one in all of North America. So we're we're blessed to have uh, the both uh, travel trailer and fifth wheel and toy haulers. What do you think has changed the last 10 years in the grand design um, tra- uh, trailer models that has kind of resulted in that success? Yeah, thanks. Good question. Well, number one is we're in business because we're barely 10 years old. <laughs> you know, we're, we're 10 and a half, 11 years old, and, and thankfully we're still here and doing as well as we're, we're doing. Um, what's changed for Grand Design is there's been an advancement in technology. There's been advancement in 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 diagnostics. There's been advancement in the service side of our business. We have in many of our models a one-touch leveling system, where just a touch of a button will level your coach and and make it camping ready. Touch of another button, the awning comes out, the slide rooms come out. So, um, customer conveniences. But as a company, what's changed in the last 10 years is we now have a full breadth of products where a dealer can actually pick up the Grand Design brand. And literally, they don't need any other brand on their lot because we cover all the major segments in the industry. You know, we're not a small boutique type manufacturer. So that $400,000 fifth wheel that represents one half of one half of a percent of the market, we'll let that and go and and we only we want to major in the majors the 95 percent of of the customer demand for our dealers and that's what we specialize in a lot of manufacturers are adjusting their product lineup uh for 2023 2024 as well um given the slower economy how has the uh, slower market affected grand design and how are you reacting you know it's made us stronger you know as when the economy is strong for you know a dozen years, um, you know you can you start going day to day to um, at, at a pace where you're trying to get uh, um, dealers' product in a timely fashion. This allowed us an opportunity to take a step back, and where some of the manufacturers literally, you know, went to a corner and and they're going to wait until the economy bounces back. We didn't. We we invested. We increased our investments in new product and new innovation. And and this show alone, you know, this is the the Super Bowl of of RV shows. This is where all of the dealers converge on Little Elkhart County, and they get to see all of the brands that are built in and around Elkhart County. And I think over eighty percent of all RVs in the states are built in and around Elkhart County. So it's our opportunity to kind of show our new products and our new innovations and just this show alone we've introduced two new brands and remember we only have five Mm -hmm. we introduced two new brands uh one subset brand actually two subset brands and 21 new floor plans so we're out swinging we're bringing to our dealers and uh exciting products that they can show to the retail consumers and keep even more people uh into the grand design family the other thing we've done is, 
you probably didn't ask for this question, but okay. I'll answer it. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing we've done is we've increased the breadth of our products um, because over the years there's price creep, right? And we want to make sure we hit the segments that we wanted to attack when we first founded the company, you know, 10 and a half, 11 years ago. So we've added, we've broadened the reach of our brand by, by introducing maybe a little bit lower price segment products so we can, we can get people that are price conscious into the Grand Design family and then upgrade uh, and with, with, with staying in our family as our needs progress. Thanks again for your time and good luck this week at the show. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Hi there, Tony Lizzie with Green Design RV. We are outside of our new Saranova product. This is a, a segment we're incredibly excited about. Um, being smaller, lighter in weight, really sleek, sophisticated look. Uh, we have seen, um, you know, the, the demographic of this likely be um, younger adults that maybe waited a little bit longer in life to get married, uh, a little bit more of an affluent type buyer. Your MSRPs are going to be anywhere from fifty to $65,000. Uh, but this is going to be that customer that's not looking to necessarily just go buy another RV, but they want to buy a lifestyle or a statement piece. They want to travel the country kind of on their terms, you know, in a way that they want to. So um, some nice, cool features on the outside is we got the more European-inspired windows on the exterior. We do have uh, the Moride torsion axle down there. Your entry door here with the trash can integrated into it. We've got a power step. Retracts as you come in and out. Up front, you have the large front cap molded with the big panoramic windshield. It does come equipped with a solar capabilities. We also have the Thule armless awning. It gives you more canopy space and not be intrusive to any kind of windows or be a head knocker. Keep the deck. Take a look inside. So we've gotten a lot of compliments about the overall interior look. Just nice, light, warm colors throughout the interior. Um, plenty of windows. Nice that they can open up in a way to give you great cross ventilation. Nice accent lighting. You're looking at some, again, European-inspired cabinetry there with the reverse concave cabinet doors. Another key feature for a model of this size is going to be the bathroom configuration. We made sure that it wasn't a wet bath. We've kept the toilet and the sink separate from the shower, which is something we feel that the target customer on this price point and this size is really going to be looking for. I'll step out of the way here so you can take a look at the bedroom area. But nice large queen bed and three large windows on both sides of it give you a chance to really enjoy some fresh air. You've incorporated different USB and USB-C outlets throughout as long as 110 to make sure you have the ability to plug in any electronics that you may have with you. Um, this comes equipped, you see here the kitchen sink. You got your two burner stove top, and then this is a convection microwave oven down below. You may notice too, as you come through this side of things, the little appointments that we're paying attention to, toilet paper holder, different areas of storage, real strategic and creative with the different storage areas throughout the interior of this coach. This is our new Saranova product. We're really excited about it. It's going to be launching in spring of 2024. This is the, the one um, 60 LG. So come check it out wherever you get a chance. Hey, I'm Logan McBride, Solitude Product Manager, Influence Product Manager. What we're standing in front of today is the, the brand new Influence brand. This is the 4003 Bunkhouse. Something completely new to Grand Design. It's hitting a price segment in the middle of reflection and solitude that we just simply have not played in before. So let's check out a few features on the exterior and then we'll hop inside. So as we're walking through the exterior of this unit, one thing I like to point out is a lot of my competitors in this in this market are about 96 inches. They're a, they're a traditional fifth wheel chassis. The Influence is going to be a true 101 inch wide, 101 inch wide body chassis. 
going throughout the entire thing. What that leads to is bigger tank capacities, deeper main slides, so you get more room inside the unit as, as you're living in it. Underneath the unit, one of the most important things is the running gear. Um, so on this unit, you've got CRE 3000 suspension, half inch shackles, which the industry norm is about a quarter inch. Um, and then you've got 17 and a half inch wheels with Cooper H rated tires. Each one of those tires has a 4,800 pound capacity on it, which is a lot more than we need in this segment. But as much as we can do from the factory to give the customers a peace of mind, then we're going to do it. So let's hop on inside. So as we're walking in here, as you can see, one of the things we wanted to accomplish here was make it, make it bright, make it welcoming. And with the lighter cabinets, the lighter window trims, this unit just feels airy. It feels like home. It's very welcoming. We've got some really cool new features in this unit. One of the coolest things is this smart sink right here. So you've got your standard faucet, built-in cutting board. You can um, then put your fruits into the strainer. You got a waterfall strainer as well in here. And then on top of that, coolest feature is your cup rinser as well. So we are very excited about this unit. We're very excited about this brand and it's going to broaden our product offering as Grand Design and hopefully reach to a heck of a lot more customers in the market. All right, my name is Brendan. Uh, we're out here at our 2023 open house. We've got our new brand with Heartland. It's, it's a Corterra. It's the first mid-pro that we've had in six years. Um, something you'll notice right off the bat is this really nice uh, large panoramic vi uh, window. Um, this is really nice. Uh, it's the largest in the industry. We've also got this cool LED light and then an upgraded pin box up front. And we can move around to the side. We have not again. See ya. So, from your entry point, you're going to have the Moride solid step along with the Moride um, extended grab handle. So, this is going to be real long, easy entrance and easy exit. Uh, we've got the Dexter Toe Assist. So, that's going to include ABS, um, sway mitigation, and an odometer. So, this will be really nice for those people who are maybe upgrading from a travel trailer and haven't pulled something this big before. It's just got some good peace of mind from uh, from the factory. So heading into the coach, we've got a new uh, modern interior. You can see the grays with the brown. A um, couple of cool things. In a smaller coach, we've tried to utilize as much as we can for storage because that's important when you're when you're camping with your family and. So we've got some, a, a hidden storage here, another big hidden storage here. Could be used as a pantry, maybe blankets, whatnot. Some more storage on the edge of the sofa. And this, this folds out into a bed so you can have some, uh, some guests if you wish. Uh, solid surface countertops. A, a large pantry here. And we've tried to make this space here uh, real functional. You can see you can use for your toaster, coffee, um, drawers for, for any coffee or K-cups, right? Um, moving back, you'll notice these the strip lights. This is new with Heartland. Um, we've got on and off, and then they're also dimmable. So that's, that's in... Corterra only. Into the bathroom. Got your corner shower. Um, nice backlit mirror. Um, washer dryer prep. Could also be used as storage for clothes or, or whatever you may need it for. And then into the bedroom. So in the bedroom, you can see we've still got those dimming lights. A nice view from the inside looking out of that big, that big window that we mentioned earlier. Some good storage. These are going to come with king size beds. And that's about it up in here. Another great thing that we've done with um, our all Heartland um, units or, or coaches, we're going to have a uh, new AC system, so there's a styrofoam insert, and that's going to produce more airflow, which will cool your coach 40% quicker and cool it 40% more. So that's that's about it with Corterra. Um, 
Thanks for watching. Hello, I'm Don Gephardt with Holiday Rambler, and we are at the 2023 Elkhart Dealer Open House, and I want to show you our Invicta 36Y. This is our newest model for the Holiday Rambler line. We'll take a quick peek. You've got lots, lots of storage on the outside. A nice big TV. But what, what really makes this product convenient for families and those camping is the outdoor kitchen. So we've got a, a griddle that pulls out and a refrigerator for the campground. We've also got a hookup for the grill if you have a grill and you want to hook up to the grill. But this unit is really unique and unlike any other Class A, and I want to show you the inside. So inside, it's really nice, convenient layout for families. You've got an L-shaped dinette that drops down into a bed. You've got nice theater motion lounge here, a nice, comfortable automotive style cockpit. You've got a well-appointed galley with solid surface countertops, really has a nice residential feel with tile backsplash, really gorgeous kitchen, this uh, Guinness uh, cabinetry is what we've called this, this dark, dark cabinetry, really nice solid cabinetry throughout this motorhome. You've got a full bath in the middle of the coach, shower, uh, porcelain toilet, really, really nice. Uh, galley for for the family or bathroom. We're going to come into the master bedroom. Uh, nice layout for the master bedroom with lots of wardrobe storage. Uh, his and her full length full length wardrobes here. I can show you inside. Uh, dresser storage, TV. But what makes this unit stand out from every other Class A is it's got a full second bedroom at the back of the coach. We like to call this the kid cave. So in the kid cave, or you can call it the guest room if you want, it's got its own sofa, that jackknife sofa that will drop down into a bed. You've got your own television, game center, um, dresser, wardrobe storage. It's all dedicated to this space that will close off for privacy. It's got a loft bunk back here. So a loft bunk with a, a ladder here to, to slide and get in and out. Lots of, lots of storage. You've got storage here underneath the loft bed, but you can also get a washer-dryer combo here if you needed it. So really nice, full private second bedroom with its own restroom back here um, for this dedicated space. So the kids don't need to bother mom and dad in the middle of the night, or your guests don't need to go into your your restroom. So really nice private restroom. Nice private space. The kid cave, really unique. Nobody else does that. Um, uh, again, it's a well, nice residential feel in this motorhome. So that's what we like to, we pride ourselves on. So this is the Invicta 36 Y. Uh, Rudy Bowles, uh, Jayco, product director for Eagle Brand. Uh, this is one of our newer floor plans for 2024. It's a 360 DBOK. You're about 42 and a half foot. Uh, this is, uh, it fills a market for us for customers that we have that need uh, multiple bedrooms, multiple bathrooms, which is why I'm about 42 foot, uh, 42 and a half foot. So um, this is all redesigned for 2024 interior and exterior. Uh, exterior, we stuck with similar colors, but we wanted to go more linear decor. So we, we did that on the outside, but stuck with the same colors. Um, added a few new features, uh, added a few more, uh, more ride, a new handle uh, that a lot of people are starting to put on. Um, this particular model has an outside kitchen, which is not set up right now, but you can kind of see uh, the outside kitchen portion of it. So a 22 inch griddle, you got a three gallon deep sink um, with uh, hot cold water. Fixtures on the off door side I can show. So our J-Port system, your table will insert into there. So your griddle sits here, your sink sits there. I got quick port for hot and cold uh, water uh, connections. Obviously refrigerator, a little bit of countertop for your outside kitchen. Uh, this particular model has dual awnings. So I think of the 42 foot, I think you have about 18, uh, 
No, actually, you're about uh, 27 foot of awning space underneath it. So that's something that we like to focus on here. We'll go inside. Good. So interior, like I said, we changed everything on 2024, went to a much brighter white um, versus the, uh, the other version of white we had. Went to all GE appliances for the most part. Um, I'm using a Everchill 12-volt uh, refrigerator, but it's a 16 cubic foot. Have a 24-inch uh, residential freestanding stove, 30-inch uh, microwave. Uh, those are some of the changes that we made. Like I said, this is a two-bedroom unit, um, so I'm going to have a, a secondary bedroom here. Obviously, the front bedroom is your typical king bed. I can put washer and dryer. Uh, I can do a washer on one side, dryer on the other. Um, big bedroom on the back side here is going to be your second bedroom with a half bath uh, we added a loft up top um, this is for uh, in-laws this is for kids this is for anybody that has extra family that want to come doesn't matter if they're uh, smaller kids can obviously fit up there if there's another uh, couple that wants to come you got a full-size queen bed on the on the back side as well Still wardrobe uh, for hanging space. I got drawers on this side. I got drawers underneath. Plenty of storage. Plenty of windows so you don't feel claustrophobic in a back room like this. Um, and then, uh, obviously, the half bath on this side over here. Yeah. So that's, yeah. This is the prototype, so there's a couple tweaks that we're going to run with. But other than that, pretty dialed in. Sorry. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, yeah, we can head up to the bedroom there. So redesigned the whole bedroom. We started introducing natural tops, um, redid the whole shower configuration, give it a much higher end look than we had before. That's not okay. So this is, uh, this is the bedroom, the master bedroom. Um, being this is a mid-pro, mid profile so it's not a full profile i'm six foot four i can stand all the way up i can walk all the way up into the closet have plenty of room i'm not skinning my head so like i said you can put a washer on one side dryer on the other you got your king beds opposing windows so you get the nice cross breeze add windows here uh obviously you can add a, up to a 32 32 to 39 inch tv there for bedroom um, we put a lot of high-end features like Whisper Quiet. And if our customers are familiar with Whisper Quiet air conditioners, we do dual 15,000 uh, Whisper Quiet air conditioners in the Eagle brand. Again, this is Rudy Bowles, uh, product director for Jayco Eagle. And this is our 2024 launch. Hi, I'm Corey Weatherton. I'm director of product development for Integra Coach and also Jayco Motorhomes. Excited to show you today the brand new Integra Coach Arc. Uh, this is a new model for us. It's on the 136-inch uh, short wheelbase ProMaster. So bumper to bumper, you're 17 feet, 10 inches long. This is the first offering on this specific chassis. We have been building on uh, the ProMaster for a little while now, but this 136-inch wheelbase, brand new for us. And so some of the things I want to point out on this, uh, MSRP, U.S. dollars, you're looking at about $135,000. We're excited for that because that brings us down into a lower price point than what our Integra Ethos is and our Jayco Swift. Uh, so even though this is a lower price point, I can tell you we haven't skimped on any of the features of it. So first and foremost, uh, this is, like I mentioned, 136 inch wheelbase ProMaster. Uh, we are ride, uh, installing a ride and handling package on this. So this does have Helwig helper springs in the rear, as well as an inch and three quarter uh, block on the rear. So that's important because we need to have generator clearance uh, on this unit, we have about six and three quarter inches generator clearance. Uh, so this specific wheelbase, we have the most generator clearance in the industry. So very specific on this, that's important to point out. It is gonna ride and handle better than anything else on the market. Second thing I wanna point out, there are other manufacturers building on this chassis. We're very intentional as we're developing this. Uh, it is a small footprint, but we wanna make it feel as large as possible. So. On the inside of this coach, we actually have a 54 inch wide sofa that converts into a 72 inch long bed. Our closest competitor is going to be a 47 inch wide sofa that turns into a 72 inch bed. So a key differentiation there. Um, also, we did put 
the sofa towards the front of the coach so that as the screen is closed, keeping the bugs out. Very intentional about seating location since this is so small. We want to make sure that the customer is able to see out and feel as uh, large and open as possible. You're going to notice that uh, in the sink and kitchen galley area that we do not have a cooktop in there. We intentionally went with a portable induction cooktop. And the reason behind that is uh, customers are going to be using their uh, countertop probably 18 hours a day. The cooktop maybe 20 minutes a day. And so we store the cooktop away uh, below the jump seat that is beside the van opening. Also on this unit, we do have a 32-inch smart television. Uh, that is going to be over the cab area. In this short floor plan, really we're the only manufacturer that's uh, uh, offering that as standard. Uh, you will notice the overhead cabinets as well as the drawer fronts uh, that we did oversize those to reduce the visible styles on that. Wanted to make it feel as residential as possible and also light and airy. So we intentionally went with the uh, country linen interior white on that. And so this unit does have, uh, I feel like it's very intentionally laid out. So as I mentioned, we do have a cooktop below uh, this jump seat here. Also in the kitchen area, we have a, a refrigerator microwave stack. And so as a customer um, end user is, is doing the dishes or cooking, they can just turn around and get into the refrigerator microwave. Uh, finally on this unit, I wanna point out the rear end of this, if you'd come with me. Um, 17 feet, 10 inches, as I mentioned, uh, we do have a very large wet bath for this size of a unit. So um, this is our Integra Coach Arc. We also build the Integra Coach Ethos. Uh, that is on the longer ProMaster. We're using the same bathroom in this as we are in our Ethos. We wanna be very intentional about offering a lot of, a lot of uh, shower room and just restroom uh, room inside of this unit. So this does have 21 gallons of fresh water. 24 gallon gray tank, and then also a uh, 4.75 gallon cassette toilet there. Uh, so what you see is what you get with Integra Coach. Uh, the only option we have on this unit is do I want a 200 watt solar panel or not? Um, but as I mentioned, super excited about this unit because it is brand new for us in the marketplace in this specific market category. And again, my name is Corey Weatherton, Director of Product Development for Integra Coach. Thanks for watching this video. All right, what's up everyone? This is Jim Waters from Lance Camper. Uh, Lance Camper and Lance Travel Trailers. Uh, we're standing here in front of our new 2255 uh, rear bath model. If you're not familiar with Lance, we are a premium manufacturer of truck campers, uh, as well as travel trailers and off-road trailers. We're here in our display at the Elkhart Open House uh, showing off our new stuff. So six of the 10 units you see are brand new. Uh, first of which I'd like to show you is the 2255. So when you're getting into a Lance travel trailer, again, you're getting into a premium camping experience. So what we're looking at here is a dual Asdale wall, a formed fiberglass front cap, uh, European acrylic windows, super lightweight windows, a TPO rock guard up in the front, all LED, all LED lighting. Um, as we continue to kind of move around the trailer, um, we have a full more ride, storage tray we have uh solar on the roof as well as solar on the side lithium ion batteries available um we're also a very lightweight trailer as we mentioned with the windows all truma branded appliances uh on the on the lance product uh so we're talking a truma aquago a truma aventa air conditioner and either a combi or a vario heat for your heat uh so again a premium experience um this trailer features our uh, new but old mountain scene graphics. So not only can you be camping in the mountains, but you're also exuding the mountains as you're going down the road. Uh, American made Goodyear tires, aluminum wheels, um, nice, very firm step that contacts the ground for safe entry and e exit. And then as we come inside, you really start to see the difference that Lance provides you. Um, solid surface quartz countertops, um, you know, our, our, everything is going to be a slight cut above. So from your fixtures in your faucets to your real glass lights, um, a full large U-shaped dinette, um, premium leather. Um, when you step into a lens, you really can feel the difference. You can feel the difference. And then if you really want to get into checking out what is really different, 
we are all CNC cut. So everything in here from where your interior walls are meeting your side walls, it's a real 90 degree angle. That's going to make this coach last the test of time as you're towing it down the road. Um, as we pan around in here, you see nice cabinets, heavy duty latches. You know, again, these, when these things go down the road, they experience like a four magnitude earthquake. So we're doing a lot of small things and then big things like CNC cutting to make sure this thing stays apart, keeps working for you. Microwave, uh, it does triple duty as a microwave, a convection microwave and an air fryer. Um, standard smart televisions, JBL sound system, your, you know, if you want to set the mood, get your fireplace going. As we go into the bedroom, all lances feature a residential queen size bed. So this will, your feet aren't going to hang off if you're a taller guy like me, and you're still going to be able to fit your sheets from home. If you look at some of the finer points, notice we're angle cutting our cabinetry. You know, again, it's small things that add up. You open up this door, you're able to fully get into here, uh, wardrobes on either side of the bed. We have just added wireless cell phone charging pads. So if I pop my phone on there, it's going to charge, you know, while you're hanging out next to bed, we're all, you know, even when we're camping, we're also tied to our devices these days. Um, if you look over here in the 2255 uh, specifically, we have a full floor to ceiling closet, a lot of storage guys. When we're looking at the windows, we have day and night shades. And again, super lightweight windows, but one of the great benefits is we can open this thing up and bring those outside in. Because when we're camping, we really want to be enjoying the great outdoors, right? Not getting shut up inside, even though, you know, we've got a little bit of weather rolling in here and it might rain today. Um... Again, the 2255 uh, specifically, this model is centered around, it's a brand new floor plan for us. It's centered around a large bathroom experience. So a wall-to-wall -wall bath with a large shower, if I could sneak in there. You know, I'm six foot two, 215 pounds. And this is a, you know, pretty nice spacious area to take a shower while you're out camping. So if you guys weren't familiar with the Lance brand, hopefully uh, you learned a little bit of something here. You know, this was one of our travel trailers. We also sell slide-in bed truck, uh, truck bed campers uh, that will mount on top of half-ton, one-ton, three-quarter-ton trucks. And uh, that's us. Check out Lance. Check out Lance Squire and the Lance Enduro. We're at the 2023 Elkhart Open House, sitting with Casey Tubman, president of Newmark Corporation. Casey, thank you very much for having us here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, our first question is, um, what is the most innovative product in your portfolio of Class A models right now? Uh, so I would say we have several innovative products within the within the class uh, of RVs that we make within our line. Uh, I could take you at the high end to what we call a King Air, uh, and that's a 600-horse uh, diesel Class A, basically with everything you can think of inside of an RV uh, or a, a a car in the front end, let's say, with the uh, the driver assist packages that come with it and things like that. And then in the house, it's everything from heated floors to full-size tile showers um, and uh, diamond gloss cabinets. I mean, again, I could go on and on. I think what I would say, what we're doing now today, innovative for this year, because a lot of times people are like, okay, I know you've got models that come out each year. What's new for this year? Um, we basically designed a 38 foot uh it's a mountain air brand um and that 38 foot has a has a dual axle in the back a tag axle as we call it um and a 525 horse power uh engine in it so very high towing capacity very high weight rating short to be able to get into uh, state parks national parks um and a little bit easier maybe to drive for people uh, and so that's the newest in our line we have it here today and we actually have a lot of people coming by to see that just What's, uh, what changes has the brand experience since uh, being acquired by Winnebago Industries? Uh, I, I would say the brand itself, Numar, has not experienced um, changes in its brand. So Winnebago acquired us as a company, but at the same time, Winnebago has six different business units, as we call them, or companies. Mm -hmm. They all act independently and they're independently run. Um, and so the part we see is from a culture standpoint, we kept it Numar. 
branding standpoint, we kept it Numar. Um, what we start to see is synergies within the enterprise around things like supply chain. Uh, while we have our own supply chain team and they do the work, they also have help now from an enterprise group if they need it or from a, what I like to call sister companies. Um, and so if they have, if a sister company has something that's working well, we can have a conversation with that group uh, that they're working with as a supplier, let's say. Um, and so things like that, HR benefits and other things that, again, are more shared uh, in terms of help. But we do run as an independent company having all functions uh, there. Can you provide any um, other examples of the synergies that have been created? Uh, sure. I think uh, probably one for me, and it's important to all of us, is safety. So safety of our people. Um, the RV industry is maybe not known for that. And, uh, and it's something that when I came into the industry, I was told up front, you know, this is something you should be aware of. Uh, we have actually cut down the number of safety instances we had in half. Uh, in the last year. So uh, made a big stride. Uh, actually, I shouldn't say the last year. It's been a couple of years. But again, the number has come down substantially. And that's a space where, again, at an enterprise level, Winnebago Industries can help us understand things that we can do, changes that we can make. Uh, and we can leverage that to then uh, help our employees stay, self, stay safe. Is the slowdown of the market affecting Numbar as other brands in the industry? Sure. We're not, uh, we're not exempt from slowdown. I would say we maybe don't feel it the same as everyone else. Um, our buyer is a, a luxury buyer, as I will say. Uh, okay. And so interest rates may affect it a little bit, but more importantly is probably the macroeconomic uh, factors uh, and where people see the future or today's economy versus the future economy. And uh, so we have seen a slowdown, uh, no question about that. Um, but we actually feel pretty good right now where we're at market share wise we've gained and we've we've grown to be the number one uh, diesel class a market share manufacturer and uh, so we feel good about that but again we also know this is a short term I call it blip uh, in the market uh, a lot of people wonder is this where we're going to be for the next years I think it's very short term and when I say short term a year year and a half still to go um, versus, you know, where we are today, we're, we're, we feel better today than we did six months ago. Okay. So future outlook, uh, feels better. And, um, again, I, I can't throw numbers at you. We're a publicly held company, so I have to be careful there. Okay, sure. Um, but what I would say is this is a blip. We know the consumers during COVID found that outdoors was relaxing, stress relieving and, and something they, uh, liked. So the number of people experiencing outdoors has grown, and we know if they've experienced it or as a child they've experienced it, so kids that are learning now from their parents during this time, they will be outdoor people for the rest of their life. And uh, so we see that growth happening uh, over time as well. Has the supply chain crisis ended in your thoughts? And what has it, has it taught you or the industry? And what state mistakes um, do you think can be avoided in the future? Oh, that's a lot of questions. Um, um, let, me, let me answer it this way. From a supply chain standpoint, yes, uh, things are in much better shape. There's always going to be an occasional uh, concern that comes up with a supplier. Uh, but for the most part, those are gone. Um, I think from a what we learned uh, for me, at least, it is being cognizant of inventories in the field, demand uh, coming, changes in macroeconomics, and being future looking versus just today. Um, and so as we look at our, our supply chain, again, we look for dual sourcing opportunities to make sure if somebody has an issue, we have another one ready to go. Um, if, uh, if the overall demand starts to slow, we need to be ready to react to that quickly. So those are some of the learnings I think we had. Thank you. Okay, Casey, thanks very much for your time. Uh, good luck have the show. Thank you, Stephen. Appreciate it. Hi, I'm Troy Schultz, an account manager, and uh, we're going to go over the London Air and a Supreme Air. Um, so as we go around here, I want to kind of talk about, this is our high line uh, London Air, which is a diesel pusher. Um, this is our number one selling, which is the 4551. Notice the thing that you're going to see on with us. Um, you know, we're a residential build, high line, so 16-inch centers. You know, we make everything on the exterior. We paint the graphics, 
storage compartment doors. This is a biggie. You know, like little things like this, we make all of our own doors at our facility. We're the luxury of all diesel lineup. You know, right now we are the number one selling, uh, Dutch Star is the number one selling brand in all of North America. Um, so that's a nice key thing. And a lot of it has to do with just the exterior, the fit and finish, how the chassis is built. So what we do is this part down is called the Star Foundation, strong, true, and robust. That's what we do at Newmar. We build the chassis. So we're building a house on wheels. So ride, handling, stability, how it's going down the road uh, with, the, with all the roads in this uh, North America is a big deal. Because you're talking about a unit that's well over 50,000 pounds, 45 feet, and you want superior handling. Um, unique things like what we have, you know, on our tag axle, it's called passive steer. So that back uh, tag axle will rotate as you go into a turning radius. Um, we're also one of the founders that um, started Comfort Drive. Um, it's electronic uh, mechanism on your front axle that allows you to kind of drive down the road if you had a big crosswind. You can tighten it up or you can loosen it up if you're going through the mountains and going through switchbacks. That's a feature called Comfort Drive. And Newmar is one of the founding fathers with that. As you go on the back here, you know, some of the things that I want to talk about, you know, all of our high-end units, we build on the Spartan chassis, which like this one is the K3, uh, which is over 600 horsepower. Um, so you have things like that that you're really going to like when you look at a Newmar, a luxury motorhome. You know, there's four or five other companies that build, but Newmar is one of the best in luxury brands. We're one of the few founders that build a, a egress door. This is an emergency door that would open up. A ladder goes all the way down to the bottom. Little things like that. <clears throat> uh, we're one of the founders of right here to make it very user-friendly for dealers to show and to convey to customers. You know, we give you a, a coil for your water line. We give you a macerator so that you can, you know, chop up the black and liquid. We give you high and low areas. We give you a filter from that standpoint. Hot and cold outside shower. And this compartment also has a heat duct going to it. So anytime you have water, um, you have heat going to that so that you could use this coach relatively all year round. Um, little things like here, you know, London Air uh, this year, um, lithium batteries is an option that we offer. So you have that user friendly, so you can go off the grid, you know, like it's really popular out West. If you want to do some of that same standpoint, um, we use the Oasis system and the Oasis system is a mechanism here. You can kind of see all the storage trays. Here's your lithium. Uh, batteries from that standpoint and our oasis system is the heat you know so gas forced air and it uses one fuel source so one of the nice things about this is the oasis uh, heats your unit with using diesel fuel so this is pretty much sums up our luxury brand on the outside uh, let's take a couple of shots and follow me on the inside we're inside the London air so you saw the exterior but wait till you see the best part the fit and finish the inside of the coach. So some key things I wanted to kind of talk to you about on the dash of a London Air. When I mentioned that comfort drive, comfort drive is a mechanism that you can control with your steering wheels to make it easier and tight turning radius. Mobile eye, you know, uh, so lane departures and lane. Uh, so if you someone comes over to your lane, the seat will uh, uh, vibrate. So those are little things. Our control panel, which is a great system. You can kind of see how to put the slide outs in, you know, your slide outs in, slide outs out, you know, privacy drapes from anything that you have on your front shade. The other thing is you look around the top here, notice the fit and finish in the detail. The key thing with us at Newmar is we build all of our own cabinetry. So like the styles comes as a board. We stain it, do it like from that standpoint. Now the door fronts, we get those ordered in and shipped into us. 
But like all of your cabinetry and storage from that standpoint, we build. Other things that you're going to see, you know, a lot of times someone might want like theater seats or a sofa, freestanding dinette. We offer those as options. You know, in the London Air, a uh, great sink from that standpoint. Little things that you're going to see, all of our cabinets, very deep, all wood drawer glides, metal drawer glides from that standpoint. Um, down to our surface. Anything that is a kitchen countertop that we make, we route the edges um, so it's a solid surface. Little things like here, we use induction. And then on your countertop, we give you a cutting board. So just little things that you have uh, within the Newmar brand. We use nothing but uh, residential style um, refrigerators, you know, lighted pantries, push buttons. So everything has a nice solid lead from that standpoint. Um, here's also your control panel. So I can control everything. So I'll go to my lights. I can control anything inside this coach all from right here. Space saving door, which is one of the few things that's really nice with this system. You know, I'm kind of a bigger guy. So one of the things when the unit is in the slides, I can still use the bathroom from that standpoint. That's another key thing. But really where you get it is, you know, this is a unit with two slides out both sides. We're the very first company ever to build a Class A diesel pusher with a slide out. Little things that you're going to watch, see king bed, uh, TV, control panels. You know, I'm six foot three, so I'm a bigger guy. One of the things I really like as you come back into the bathroom, it's not one of those just little RVs. You've got a shower stall that's just like a house. You know, these are some of the things that you're going to have. Bathrooms, dual sink in your bathroom, which is really nice. Anytime you have uh, sliding doors, tons of storage and space from that standpoint. And then also washer and dryer. Okay. So one of the things that you see here, when you're talking luxury motorhomes, Newmar is the brand. So this is the inside of a luxury motorhome, the London Air. So as you can see, you know, there's a lot of things to kind of look that make a difference with Newmar on how we build things, how we put them together. You know, a lot of the components we do in-house, so we get to control the quality and the overall look. So when you're looking for a Newmar pusher or a diesel pusher in a Highline, go see Newmar. Everybody, my name is Dylan Risser. I am from Paws. I work uh, for the Paws sales team here. Uh, today, I'm going to take you through our 20.3, some of the main features on this unit. And we're going to start at the bottom on our suspension. Our suspension is completely independent. It is on airbags with a couple Bilstein shocks on there as well. From where we are at right now, we can lift it up another 12 inches to get you 25 inches of ground clearance. Pretty substantial. Our frame is all aluminum. It is huck riveted as well, so you're not going to see any welds on here whatsoever. Nothing to crack, break. Um, our walls, our floor, our roof is all a transcore composite. It is thermally bonded together. You're not going to see any adhesives on there, so nothing's ever going to delam. Uh, on the inside, we don't have any seams, no seam tape to worry about, being that it is all one piece. As we look up, we have a legless awning as well. This will expand out 10 feet. It is 14 feet wide, so it gives you plenty of uh, coverage uh, from all the rain and everything that's happening. As we look around here as well, we got dual pane windows, shades, screens on those windows as well, some speakers, lights on all four sides, cameras on all four sides. And, uh, you know, we can take a look on the inside as well, that too. As we get in here, you quickly notice uh, that all our cabinetry is a powder-coated aluminum, so we don't have any wood on here whatsoever. Uh, not one speck of wood on the trailer, so nothing's going to rot or warp. All the cabinets are actually soft-closed. You can see there, again, these are the powder-coated cabinets, heavy-duty struts. These are the shades I was talking about on the windows. And we also have a screen option as well. This is our dinette option here. We also have an option for a drop down bar, but this gives you a nice place to uh, sit down, eat your meals. And then at night, this also turns into sleeping area as well. 
In the bathroom here, as we look in here, we have a foot flush toilet that's porcelain. We have a full fiberglass shower here, full body spray, aluminum cabinets in here as well. Got a mirror, good place to get ready each morning. Our water heater is right here. Uh, it's going to be a tankless water heater. Right here, we have our 11 cubic foot 12 volt refrigerator. Right next to it, we give you a nice little pantry. Bring all those belongings from home. We have a three burner cooktop. We have an oven, a microwave above, and a large sink here too with a sprayer, high rise sprayer here. This is our uh, part of our camera system, this Voyager screen here. So you notice we have cameras on all four sides. Up front here, we'll take you to the full size queen bed. This is actually an electric bed. So we could put it down or we could actually take it back up. That way at night, you know, we got a full size 60 by 80 queen. A couple t-shirt closets on each side as well. And then as you look up above the bed, we have a couple stargazer windows here. These are nice when you're laying in bed at night, look up, see the stars, just get a great vista from laying in bed. We're at the 2023 Elkhart Open House in Elkhart, Indiana, sitting with Mike Lanciotti, president of the Rev Recreational Group. Mike, thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you uh, for having me. Thank you. How do you feel uh, about the Open House this year, and are you expecting a good turnout of uh, dealers and suppliers? Yeah, I, well, there for sure is a good turnout of suppliers so far that we've seen, and yesterday was the first day. It started slow. Uh, in the afternoon, more and more dealers showed up, and and there's actually been a lot of activity. So far today, I'd say it's probably, I think it's going to be the best day of the show, and more and more uh, dealers are showing up as the day goes on. What percentage of the RV segment is the business of the Rev Group, Rev Recreation Group? Of the entire group? The, of the Rev Group, yes. Yeah, the, the RV segment's about a third in sales of uh, the Rev Group. What is the most successful brand in the RV segment? Yeah. This year, this time right now, Renegade is the most successful brand. It continues to operate at a, a very high level uh, with very high quality products and mar uh, very acceptable margins. Um, and some of it has to do with the Class C market. The Class C market seems to be stronger in the industry than some of the others. Uh, the Class B market is also pretty strong, and therefore our Midwest uh, vans um, have, a, have a pretty good showing right now as well. Are there any new buying trends or demands um, from your motorhome customers? Uh, for instance, are they looking for smaller Class B models or lighter weight, light, lighter weight trailers? Yeah, I think uh, the trend is certainly for lighter weight and lower price and and lower cost. I wouldn't say decontented, maybe maybe contenting uh, more affordable items in the coach, but. Um, that, that seems to be the trend. Shorter on the motorized, uh, many states are, are controlling the length of your units. So uh, um, shorter units and then less price seems to be the answer. Uh, the Red Group um, is very active with uh, in, in the EV market um, in, in many of its business seg segments. Um, are there any plans to introduce EV technology in your RV segments? At this point in time, as far as what we're doing in the other segments, the answer would be no. Um, we're kind of debugging, de uh, seeing what, what works real well and what doesn't work real well with them, and then we'll, we'll see what we can do with it. But because of the vast uh, different sizes of units, like the one, one we're in here, this big freight liner, it would take a lot of EV power to, to move this thing and keep it going, and you wouldn't be able to go very far into, with today's technology in the world without having to charge up. And most of our customers in these larger units want to go uh, three hours, four hours, you know? So if you're going 60, 70 miles, you're talking three or 400 miles, uh, and then you don't want to spend all day charging it again. So there's a, a lot of reasons why not. Uh, we've actually taken uh, the lithium, we use the lithium batteries for uh, powering the coach, uh, the, the inside of the coach, uh, trying to get rid of, um, in the spirit of the, the green, um, diesel generators and natural gas generators and, and using these batteries to, to power the coach. Well, thank you much, very much for your time. I hope you have a great show. And um, uh, it was a pleasure speaking. Okay. With you. Yeah. And thank you for having me and good luck. Thank you. Hello, I'm Dwayne Kasmerzak with Renegade RV. I am the director of sales and marketing here. Um, welcome to the, uh, 
uh, dealer open house. Uh, I've got the brand new Excel here, or uh, really uh, new, re newly released uh, Excel that uh, I'm going to show you today. Um, lots of new features. Uh, we basically did a, a little bit of an enhancement on this. It's currently running as our flagship product, so it's going to have uh, all the high-end features, uh, a lot of things that uh, you would normally find in a much more expensive coach. Um, we're all, obviously out on the outside here, and as you can see, one of the really nice features, you have a full overhead awning here, which is going to cover your complete campsite. Um, there's tons of storage. I'll go into that in a second. This is, in particular, is our bunk model right here. And uh, so you're, you're going to have a lot of sleeping capabilities. Uh, it's on a, a, a Freightliner uh, a P4 well, 126 chassis, so you're going to have over 600 horsepower and uh, all, the, all the comforts for driving down the road. A lot of safety features as well. Um, quickly going into the, the coach, as far as one of the things that are really, really great with a Super C for us is we've got a ton of storage here. And both these bays, uh, you'll be able to see, are, are fully joined. So unlike a Class A, where you're going to have uh, a long uh, bay going all the way across underneath the coach, this one you're going to have a long bay, which is fully accessible and right on your campsite as well. So you can get, get things in and out as, as you might need. Um, you'll have an exterior TV out here. And as you can see up here um, on the inside, this is our, uh, our bunk area right here. But um, just so that we can speed things along, I'll take you into the inside and show you a few features in there as well. As you enter the unit here, you're going to find uh, a lot more of a modern look, a contemporary style. Um, lighter tones in the woodwork. We enhanced some of the uh, the hardware this year and the colors, the leathers, the everything that, that you're going to see here is all top, top end. Um, we even, we've got a, a quartz material that we use, which is Cambria um, for all the counters, uh, full tile backsplash, very high-end appliances here. You're going to have um, Samsung microwave, Samsung, which is actually going to be the, the touch screen refrigerator um, with all of your lists and whatnot that you want to put on there. Um, all the cabinetry is, is purely residential. You'll see that you're going to have tons of storage in here, um, soft close sliders that will give you um, all the high-end features, uh, dovetail uh, drawer uh, ends there for the assembly, and it's just a lot, a lot of storage. Tons of storage in this coach. Um, this particular model uh, set up with uh, a sofa, dinette. Um, you'll have uh, tile heated floors in here um, going through. You'll also have uh, a lot more of a large pantry here with plenty of pullouts. Uh, you'll have washer and dryer set up back here. I know we're going fast, but I want to make sure that you can see all of this. Um, as you enter back here, this one is unique. You're going to have the bunks on this side, and this, this area can be closed off. But normal, you would have um, just a half bath here. I've got two full baths, one in the middle and one in the end that we'll see in a moment. So this area back here is the master suite. So like I said, this can be closed off. Um, Everything that you have in this area is contained so you can uh, maintain privacy. But uh, I, I encourage you to check out the, the bathroom in there. You've got a nice teak seat for a uh, uh, seated shower area. You'll have a uh, toilet. Again, the quartz. Lots of good quality features in this. Hi, it's Steve Duval from Thora Motor Coach. Behind me, the 2024 Palazzo GT. This is the 37.5 floor plan. So the Palazzo GT is much like the Palazzo you have known and love, only what we've done is we've taken out some of the features and made it more of a price point diesel motorhome. Outside, you still get the gorgeous full body paint, lots of room, lots of storage bays in here to 
bring along everything you need, a lot of fresh water. Look at the size, you have pass-through storage on here. This is gonna be a straight rail chassis from Freightliner, powered by a Cummins ISB 6.7 liter engine. Exterior TV right out here, so when you wanna entertain, that will open, there is a awning. And this is one of the places where we have saved a little bit of money so you can afford a palazzo is this is now on an arm instead of being the armless awning up top you now have an armed awning but it is not going to take away from your enjoyment we can go ahead and head on inside great floor plan in here what's nice about driving the palazzo gt is a Freightliner OptiView Dash. Everything is all digital, makes it real easy for keeping your eyes on the road. All the information about your motor home is right on the touch screen. And then when you get into our living area, right set up here, we're gonna have our dinette here, built-in child safety tether. So if you travel with little ones, the car seat will fit right there. Cup holders for the ride. There's going to be seat belts here. This makes into a bed. It's really your go-to spot the dinette is always one of my favorites as i travel with uh, uh my wife and two daughters so it's just kind of our spot for games and meals then you also have the sofa this will also convert into a bed so you're going to have sleeping here you're going to have sleeping here and then you're going to have sleeping in that drop down overhead bunk and what's great about this seat right here you can see from our entertainment center a tv that is on a televator so there's a beautiful one to be behind there if you don't want to watch tv and just look out the window at your beautiful campsite fireplace down below that actually throws off heat and that will take and warm up your motor home on a cool crisp morning solid surface countertops in the kitchen nice drying rack here for your double bowl sink put your dishes there and lots of storage in here cooking on the road wherever you want with the convection microwave you also have a dual burner electric induction cooktop this is going to be a bath and a half model so midship we find our half bath everything you want in a bathroom in a motor home you have your for, for, uh, porcelain foot flush toilet a lot of counter space a medicine cabinet and that is the half bath and then we get into our bedroom here our bed is on a tilt of view mechanism so you can sit back here with your heads up you read watch tv and then when it's time to sleep you can just go ahead and press the button and then that will come down and lay flat but i don't want to put it all the way down so i can walk around right here and show off the master bath this is going to be just an absolutely beautiful bathroom two sinks back here porcelain foot flush toilet you have this fiberglass shower surround you have a bench right here you have tankless hot water so all the features and amenities you need in a motorhome on the road this is the Palazzo GT 37.5 floor plan. Hi, it's Steve from Thor Motor Coach. This is the all new Tranquility 24C from Thor Motor Coach. This is built on a 170 inch wheelbase Mercedes Benz Sprinter chassis, and this has the new Mercedes drivetrain. So, Mercedes moved away from the six cylinder. It's now a four cylinder, two stage turbo diesel under the hood, making more horsepower at 211 horsepower. And you now have 332 pound-feet of torque and that is a nine-speed transmission we also put these big b of goodrich ko2 all-terrain tires on their deweys in the back so this is really a van that can take you if you are adventure minded anywhere and the nice thing about this is it has all of the mercedes safety features that you know and love from traffic sign assist crosswind assist automatic emergency braking blind spot warning and it's luxurious as the day is long as we come inside you can see here we have four captain's chairs it's almost like flying in a first class airline beautiful mercedes dash we take and recover the seats with our own material and what's nice about all these front seats swivel and you can get in here and have a conversation the rear seats are heated as well the passengers have a tv we have a great blind system here that doesn't really take up a lot of space so if you want that privacy when you're on the road a lot of storage because that's one thing people really want in a van outside of having the ability to travel anywhere you want to bring your stuff with you uh, if we can come in and walk back a couple of features in here everything is controlled from lights to climate through this control panel here your heater and your hot water run right off of your diesel tank that is controlled here plenty of counter space for what you need in a van portable single burner electric induction cooktop you have a fridge a 12 volt fridge a sink 
so you can cook meals on the road. And what what's surprising in a lot of vans, you get these really tight, cramped bathrooms. But if you've ever been in an airline bathroom, this will rival, and not that you know, an airline bathroom, something to write home about. But this is actually impressive. There's room to move. You know, you can get in here. You don't have a flip down sink. It's actually a very large bathroom. Now you have to remember we're in a van, okay? We are in a van. Uh, so a large bathroom in here. And then my favorite seating area uh, of all of the vans, this is going to be your seating area. This is going to be your bed. A table pops right into place here. So you can sit people back here, game night, dinner, whatever. There's a TV back here. There are seat belts back here for the ride. And this is a power bed. So just a press of a button, this will come down, make into a bed. And you may be asking, well, can I actually sleep there? And that's one of the questions people have. Can I really sleep in this van? I stand in these shoes just over 6'1". I can lay down fully. And I still have quite a bit of room down here. So there's plenty of room to sleep, to travel, to eat. This is the ultimate in people movers. This is the Tranquility 24C from Four Motor Coach. Hello, my name is Hagen Stovall. I'm here with Tiffin Motorhomes. Um, this is our brand new Wayfair. Uh, this is the RLW. Um, first thing you can see on the outside, it's gonna catch your eyes, it's gonna be the full body paint. It's something that we do across the board on all Wayfairs. Uh, there is no graphics package. Um, as you can see, there is no there's no seam. It's, it's all full body paint, uh, three colors of paint, two coats for each color, and then a clear coat at the end. Um, another thing that you're gonna notice about our Wayfair is on a Mercedes chassis. Um, all we order are premium chassis. So every Wayfair that you get, there is no upcharge for special safety uh, features, um, bigger screen. It all comes standard with the Tiffin Wayfair. And once you get inside, you can you can really look at the the dash of of the chassis and notice the bigger screen, the multifunction controls on the steering wheel and, and stuff like that. Um, this is the newest floor plan that we have out for the Wayfair, and uh, we can go on inside and, and just take a look at, at some of our new features. Um, first things first, with this floor plan, you're going to notice there is no slide. Um, pros about not having a slide is going to maximize your OCC, meaning you're going to be able to carry... Uh, more food, more clothes, more passengers um, than maybe if one that did have a slot. Um, what's special about this unit has a rear living area. Uh, you do have two theater seats here with a seat with the chase as well. Um, three can seat comfortably with a Murphy bed back behind that just easily pulls down um, and then you have a, a queen size bed. Um, another thing that separates Tiffin from a lot of our competition, hardwood cabinets. There is no particle board throughout this throughout this coach. Um, you can open them up. Um, all of our cabinets are maple um, with stain or paint. This one is obviously painted. Um, another big feature in Tiffin, one-piece fiberglass shower. Um, th there is no plastic surround with a plastic uh, pan, you know, with a seal and a seam across the bottom. Um, this is durable. It's going to last you as well as the Elwell system, which is now standard on every Tiffin Wayfair. Um, many of our options on the inside, so you have um, the refrigerator, um, the gas electric refrigerator is standard. You do have the option for the all-electric package, which would include the Elwell system, which is your water heater and your furnace, which would also include an all-electric refrigerator uh, induction cooktop as well. Um, here in the kitchen, back to the cabinets, solid surface, or solid, solid wood cabinets, maple, solid surface countertops. So there is no laminate in this coach at all. So especially being around water, if you have laminate over time, that laminate may delam, it may pull apart, you know, the glue may melt. Um, when that happens, water gets in on that compressed board, it's gonna warp, it's gonna crumble, um, just, just causing damage to your countertops. You do not have to worry about that. And Tiffin, solid surface countertops across the board. Um, back to the chassis, as I was explaining before, uh, premium chassis, so this this is going to have all the safety features, um, crosswind assist, lane assist, brake assist, adaptive cruise control. That's that's all. That's just a few of them, but that is all standard with with our chassis, which again is on every Wayfair. There is no upcharge. There is no opting in for this chassis. This is standard. Um, heated and cooled seats, leather uh, Mercedes Benz leather seats, 
Uh, they do swivel. And as you can see on the steering wheel, that is a leather multifunction steering wheel. Um, if you do not, if say one of our competitors does not have a premium chassis, instead of having those multifunction uh, buttons on the steering wheel, it'll just be a silver panel there in place of the multifunction system. Um, that's just an upcharge that Tiffin is, is going to put standard on every on every coach. Um, yeah, so that is our new RLW floor plan. Um, come check us out, and I hope you enjoy it. Good afternoon, Don Krasnowski, Tiffin Motorhomes. Today, I'd like to show you one of our newest models. This year is a 2024 Faden. This is our 35CH. It's one of our newest shorter floor plans we adopted from the Allegro bus. If you like, I'd like to show you a couple things that are pretty cool with it. One of the things that we did is we did a extended storage height platform, which if you can look down in here, how much higher the storage is, we get about 33% more storage this year. Reason that's important, on a smaller unit like this, you only have one cargo bay. So when you can go up 33% more, it's a lot more stuff that uh, mama pops can bring on. Um, addition to that, we've done a 450 horsepower motor this year, which allows us to do a flush floor front to back on a 35, 37, 40, and 44. So you'll have all the same platform this year. Fire Opal is the uh, paint we have this year. Um, if you like, we go inside and I'll show you a couple things that are new this year, okay? As you can see, as you walk in, the first thing you notice is our new black truffle, uh, darker wood. I think we've done a pretty good job with our decor, so it gives kind of a, a farmhouse look. Uh, a lot of folks are looking for other alternatives than just the natural woods that uh, a lot of the manufacturers have offered uh, this year. Another new change we've done this year is we've gone to all white ceilings. New porcelain tile. This particular coach is all electric with a heated tile floor. If you move back into the center, you'll see that we have a full wall slide. But when we're talking about 35 foot, a lot of things are a little more compact. If you look at our extended up bed, which allows you when we close these slides, our customers can still get around and come into the rear bathroom that's in the rear that has his and her uh, sinks. Well, you know, this year, you know, what we've done is, uh, you know, you can get theater seats on the side or you can get a full uh, pull-out air-cooled mattress. We've gone with the table and chair set up with a 50-inch TV that comes up out of the cabinet. If you look over here, because we are electric option, you're going to get induction. You're going to get the aqua hot. New LG, along uh, with being a microwave convection, it's an air fryer. We are here with Nicolas Rousseau, the uh, director general of Rapido Group. And here in the United States, you have also Road Trekkers brand. And uh, the good news, uh, the fantastic news that Westfalia is coming back. So, can you tell us why did you decide to go back to coming back with the Westfalia brand? Well, it's uh, been in the plan since uh, we uh, required the asset of Road Trek back in 2019. Um, we, uh, we know that we have this big class uh, know-how in Europe with Westphalia, with other brands, but especially Westphalia. And we also know that Westphalia brand is known in North America because back in the days, 60s, 70s, uh, the VW Combi and the Westphalia name has been uh, very well known. It's been 100,000 of units distributed in North America. So we thought it would make sense to uh, relaunch this uh, very known, uh, very, uh, very known brands in the van and the B van uh, market one day through road track operations. Okay, um, how is the market going for, for road track in North America due to the slowdown that the market is experiencing? Yes, yes, in fact, uh, so uh, we do, um, I've seen that the sales are going down, however, we don't suffer too much of uh, stock ourselves. We have uh, stored a little bit of production and we don't have too much stock by our dealers so so far it's uh, going okay and uh, we will try to to bring some new innovative products to um to promote sales and to 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 trigger sales again okay how is the customer of your camper van here in north america yeah, it's, a, it's a good question because uh, talking to our dealers it seems it's a different usage than from in europe in Europe, people, they use, they sleep in the vehicle, they would shower in the vehicle, uh, they would use this for their, you know, vacation, they go out for one, two weeks, two weeks. It seems in the, in the United States, it's most, more used as a secondary car 
and it's more uh, of uh, going outdoor, bring the kids to uh, you know sports, it's activities, outdoor activities. Um, you know, going to football, going uh, one day uh, camping, or uh, uh, but it's it's a, it's it seems um, now both usage. You know, the secondary car, and also some are what they call plug out, and they go really into the wild and that full autonomy with lithium batteries and so on. So you got both both usage usage, but it's uh, it's of course the country is different, the distances are different, so the product has to be adapted. Are you satisfied of the, uh, how this air car open house is going on? So far, it's okay. Yes, yes. We had a lot of dealers coming to visit uh, our booth and uh, many interest in the Vesfaya brand. So we are collecting the request and we will uh, make uh, a dealer network uh, in the next weeks. And for sure, we'll start the serial production in January 24. Okay. Thank you, Nicolas. Have a nice event. Thank you, Antonio. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hi, so I'm Steve, uh, lead project of and designer of Westfire in World Track, and I will introduce you to this new Westfire on the ProMaster chassis. So let's come inside. I will show you some features. So we'll start with a fridge of 90 liter of capacity, with a little extension of countertop. We come inside. And we have this bench seat. This bench seat is a unique feature. With this seat, you can just quickly have a new bed on the front. Perfect for two children or, or one adult. Everybody is well in it. Yeah. Easy to put that back. We introduced the U-print design in this van. So all the door are flat, the straight line, modern design. Accent light everywhere, a lot of storage. So if you come inside, you will see the bed. There we go. So it's a pretty, pretty decent size of bed. You have three configuration with the with this bed. The easy access. So this configuration when you have access to the bed, uh, to the bed and uh, with a step. You can extend the bed with this little add-on you can put here, but you will not have access to the step. And the third configuration, let's go outside for that. On the west fire, you will have a pretty decent water closet with a um, cassette toilet and some storage and enough space for you to be able to move comfortably and take your shower. The third configuration will be a slightly smaller bed, but with this configuration, you will be able to store your bike inside the van. So if you have a very expensive bike, you will be able to store the van, your bike inside and still have enough space to sleep in. We're sitting here with Hugh Bauer, the president of Winnebago, uh, Tobles and Motorhomes. Um, Hugh, thank you very much for sitting with us today. Good to see you guys. Just a few questions here. Um, what are your top priorities for product innovation in, in the next one or two years? So we've got a couple of focus areas. On the turbo side of the business, we're looking at light weighting and we're looking at uh, improving fit, finish and quality across our whole plot product lineup, but also looking at innovating on price point. So with the market as it is in the US now, we're looking at increasingly price conscious consumers. So creating that feature benefit specification at a lower price point is a challenge for our designers. So we're, we're embracing that with our new access product line. I know we've had time to look at some of our product and the access product line is phenomenal. I know it's a new price point in the conventional build stick and tin methodology um, that we typically haven't engaged that in before. So we're coming in at a price point and value proposition for a consumer to get into the Winnebago brand at a lower price than they've ever been ever seen before, which is really compelling from a brand expansion and growth opportunity. So excited about that. On the motorhome side, you know, product innovation uh, starts with, for us, uh, the, core, the core product features and floor plan innovations that we are bringing to market. We see that in terms of the new Echo that we've just recently released on a Sprinter chassis. The extended, really extended length of the chassis gave us opportunities to put in uh, increased sort of functionality for consumers on that, that really good product. 
Uh, what you're going to see later on as we go through the year is a focus on connectivity. And so when we look at connected solutions for our vehicles that connect to uh, the consumer to their vehicle through an app. We're going to be launching our Win Connect systems on the View Navian, the new View, View Navian platform uh, later on this year, which will be an exciting, I think, step forward in how people experience our product, both physically, but as well as digitally. Having said that, so um, what do you think are the biggest trends right now um, in the RV market in the next one or two years? Well, I think, you know, in the U.S., we're looking at people looking for value, right? So that value, that price point, as I said, is where we're heading on a lot of our turbos, uh, uh, sort of turbo innovation. I think on the on the, uh, on the the B-Van side in the U.S. market, and that's been a segment that's grown very strongly in the recent years, uh, people are looking for that, that, that off-road, um, sort of rugged sort of lifestyle element. So that sort of... Um, Outdoor um, sustainability and length of boondocking capability is a really important trend for us. We focus that on some of the new lithium systems we're bringing to the marketplace and our partnership with not only the EcoFlow a company, but also the acquisition of Lithionics by uh, Winnebago Industries helps us create durable, reliable, uh, effective power solutions for all our vehicles. So those sorts of innovations are, um, I think, increasingly becoming the expectation from consumers. What do you think are some of the the, um, the biggest challenges that you face in meeting uh, some of these trends and, and consumer um, expectations? I think uh, you know we're we're proud as Winnebago. We're proud of the quality we bring to the marketplace. We're renowned for the quality of our product. We're renowned for the the parts service availability and the uh, uh, the sort of service we provide to dealers and ultimately to consumers. Um, I think the challenge for the industry as a whole is that our consumers expect quality levels that exceed. Uh, the typical bar of the RV industry in the estates. And so constantly aspiring to improve the fit, the finish, the quality, the reliability, the durability of our products is key for long-term growth in this industry. You've uh, delivered some really big news with um, your ERV2 yeah. um, motorized um, motorhome. Uh, what can you tell me about any upgrades and uh, product developments on that? So we started with a concept vehicle for the ERV2. Uh, we moved into a prototype vehicle. We took that prototype vehicle into a testing phase where we put it into the marketplace, or as I say, put it into the wild with the users, real consumers, for three to four months. Uh, where we had hundreds of users go through that experience, testing the, um, how, do I, how do I do a, a, an electric, uh, how does RVing, the experience of RVing in an electric way, um, how, how, do I, how do I sort of, um, think about my trip planning and my use case in those environments. We've taken a lot of refinements from the fit finish layout, but also the integration of our Win Connect system into that vehicle and evolved those systems for the, from that feedback. So that's not a normal step in the product development cycle that we've used in the past, extensive field testing in that way. And we've certainly benefited uh, significantly from doing that. So we're excited by the product. It's got some really intriguing and unique use cases and features. Uh, we're proud to be creating uh, an innovation halo around the brand with the with the advent of the the electric prototype. Well, the platform is certainly in- interesting, and um, it, it's a, definitely a step up in, in the camper van style yeah. style markets. Uh, what is your forecast for twenty twenty four and beyond for 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 the uh, the camper van market? The camper van. So um, when you think of van markets, it's had a long a strong growth trajectory over the last uh, few years. That now has eclipsed Class A in, in terms of ultimate size in terms of um, volume in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Uh, we think it's an attractive place to be. A lot of people have moved into that. Most OEMs have now brought offerings. You have a lot of new emerging uh, and fast-growing uh, sort of competitors in the space. So we think it'll it'll keep a healthy dynamic and a healthy competitive edge in that marketplace. I think it's poised to grow as those uh, competitors keep innovating around what people care about the van the van lifestyle. And I think that's going to be uh, a catalyst for continued growth for the same one. Hi, I'm Adam Christofferson, uh, General Manager from Winnebago Towables. Uh, we're here with our brand new 2024 Access. Uh, some of the nice key features on the outside are going to be the type of metal that we're using. So we're using larger 12-inch uh, pieces of metal, and they're actually not going to have a bunch of uh, rivets in it. So that helps us get us a clean seal and look around the windows and baggage doors. But also, um, it's got a very uh, sleek and aggressive look to it. But we're using a high gloss metal versus a matte finish metal. And this high gloss metal actually gives us UV blocking properties for climates with uh, sun. So you're not going to get as much fading um, as, as a, a, a throughout the life cycle that the uh, customer is going to own this. 
And a couple other things that we've done to really position this thing with value price is uh, maintain some premium features such as a fully enclosed sealed heated underbelly with 12 volt tank pad heaters. You've got four corner uh, power stabilization jacks to go along with the power tongue jack. You have a two inch accessory receiver hitch in the rear for the versatility of bikes or gear hauling. Uh, we have tw uh, factory supplied solar, so a 2000 or 200 watt solar panel on the roof, a 30 amp charge controller, as well as side mount solar prep for additional uh, solar capabilities. And then what we wanted to do is we wanted to maintain a unique look that we have that's a, a kind of an identity for us within Winnebago Towables. So as we enter the interior here through the solid step, you'll see that we have a little bit more of a modern look to it uh, with full overlay type cabinetry. You don't have a lot of dead panels or styles. So we're trying to maximize as many square inches of storage that we can. And then you can see it's very light. So we've got a light uh, main wood tone with the light colored lino. You got the uh, lino in the slide to really open that up. And then your wall board and uh, ceiling board maintain just a nice white as well. We do put a little bit of accent blue in here just to give it a little bit of uh, contrast, but still not a lot of in your face color. It allows the end consumer to then go ahead and customize and kind of finish it with what colors they like with shawls and throw pillows. This particular model here is a 30, uh, 30 BH, so it's a bunk model. One thing that's really appealing is that you do have your corner bunks here, but instead of it being rounded off and open with the curtain, you have your own, you have squared off double over double beds and you have an actual privacy door, a passage door. So your main bedroom up front for mom and dad, they have their own privacy sliding door. You can see there, we actually have the bed flipped up. We've redesigned the bed bases. So you have storage on the sides and then we have kind of pet friendly bed in the middle, but it's also designed around um, uh, a, fa uh, a standard clothes bin, but they, there's own sliding door there. One other thing is this bunk model has an outside kitchen. The actual outside kitchen is integrated below this pantry right by the refrigerator. A lot of bunk models, your outside kitchen is actually integrated into the bottom bunk. Here, we wanted to maximize storage in the bunk room. Your bottom bunk does flip up and hinge up. You do have your rear pack and play door but you can see there the platform that it hinges on is all open as well for additional storage. And then in the bathroom, we're able to maintain a nice large bathroom. We have a porcelain toilet and that's a 30 by 36 shower with a 14 by 22 skylight. So it makes that shower seem a lot larger than it actually is. We have no ducting in the floor area. So all of your heat ducts are gonna be integrated into the base cabinet area or bed bases, in some cases dinette bases. But you can see here, we're actually on grass. It's raining outside. There's a lot of grass here in the floor. And as you're out camping, you don't have to worry about any of that debris going down into your heating ducts. So thank you for joining on this tour of the Winnebago uh, Access for all new from Winnebago Towables. Hello, my name is Chris Beanert, uh, product manager here at uh, Winnebago Industries uh, for our camper vans on the Solus and Solus Pocket in particular. Behind me is our new van for uh, 2024 here, the Solus Pocket 36B. We designed the Solus Pocket 36B uh, largely for uh, younger travelers, uh, also the single traveler. Is built on the 17 foot, 17 foot, 10 inch uh, Ram Promaster, 136 inch wheelbase chassis. So it fits in a conventional parking spot, extremely maneuverable. And we've got a uh, chock full of new innovations this year. And if you like, we'll just take a step inside and we'll have a look. The heart of a Solus Pocket is in this space here. It's the multifunctional uh, piece of furniture that can be a sofa, it can be a dinette, it can be uh, a bed in this case. But what we've really, what our real innovation this year is this seat in the back here that pulls out and expands, but still provides 
two forward-facing three-point seat belts while in transit. Flip over table. So in this short van, you still have a tremendous amount of table space here, whether you're working from the road, playing uh, board games, or enjoying a meal with your family. Also new as an option in the Solus 36B is what we're calling Winnebago Power. This is essentially a system primarily built up of EcoFlow components. We worked with uh, the company EcoFlow to create the Power Hub Pro kit or Power Kit Pro. This combines a lot of the functionality of DC to DC converters, inverters, MPP, MPPTs, charge controllers, and such into one unit. So it greatly reduces the number of connections on the inside of the coach electrical connections. It's powered by a five kilowatt, 48 volt battery. So power wise, if you look at air conditioning, you're probably looking at three, three and a half hours of uh, AC time out of that five kilowatts. It's charged either through solar uh, on the roof or through the chassis alternator comes up through the power kit pro uh, we're using the base chat the original chassis alternator we'll charge at a rate between 1000 and 1500 kilowatts sorry 1500 watts system also has a a built-in control panel that lets you monitor and control the power system inside the coach or also through an app on your phone. One of the other uh, unique features that separates our 30 and our 36B is the rear bath area. There's a lot of rear baths uh, like this uh, being built in different camper vans in the United States. Uh, we decided to completely redesign that space. So ours has a fixed sink, countertop, storage space, up there for your shampoos, soaps, and whatnot. Use a Thetford removable toilet uh, with the lower half cassette so that you can use the entire space for showering uh, if you so choose. And of course we have towel storage and clothing and storage for your outside accessories, power cords and such. And something that Winnebago has been doing on the in the Solus Pocket line that was, although common in Europe, was relatively new in the U.S., was using the LP bottles uh, inside of the van. And in this case, we even have it on the hinge to take the tank in and out. A little bit about the uh, RBMH Hall of Fame and Museum. Uh, we're standing in the upper level right now, which uh, it, we call the Wall of Fame. It uh, honors the pioneers of the RV industry, as well as the manufactured housing industry, which used to be called the mobile home industry. And uh, that's one of the reasons we're a 501c3 not-for-profit. Yeah, they, they, the, the way folks are, are inducted into the Hall of Fame, they have to have a minimum of 25 years in the industry. They have to have uh, a sponsor to fill out the uh, induction form. And uh, there's uh, 10 questions on there that all about their life and their accomplishments and so forth. And uh, then they need three support letters from people uh, in the industry or friends, family, or people that, that know them. And then this, uh, they, they uh, send that into uh, the Hall of Fame. There's a committee that meets every November that goes through everyone that's, that's, uh, that's a, uh, a legitimate uh, document. And uh, we have, we've had as many as 78 people trying to get in in a year, so and only 10 can get in. So, you know, you've got quite a backlog, but uh, uh, a lot of key people and a lot of pioneers in both industries. So uh, then there's a, a committee, both RB and MH, that go through each and every one and, and uh, narrow it down to five from each uh, industry. And, uh, and then the induction dinner is always the third uh, Monday of August of the following year. This room is, uh, is our library room. 
we it's it's actually half of what we provided uh, but right now it's uh, there's a, approximately 25,000 copies of uh, going back to the beginning of both industries and uh, they're they're all in uh, order by the year and in each one of these boxes is is a, a year copy of whether it's Trailer Life or whatever magazine. Th this is a, a museum, I, I mean a theater that seats about 80 people because we get busloads of people that come in and we it's self-guided tours through the museum. So they need a little bit of orientation uh, before they go through. And that's what this video does. It, it tells them a little history uh, about Elkhart being the capital of the RV industry. Now we're going to enter the uh, Manufactured Housing Museum. It's named after uh, uh, Jim Schooler, and uh, he's a major contributor and was kind of the, the uh, force behind getting the museum built about 15 years after it should have been built <laughs> because of the uh, financial situation that the hall had at that time. So we're, we're entering the uh, temporary RV museum that we, we moved so that we could uh, have a supplier show in, in the museum coupled with the, the adjacent room. So it become one big room. So now we're starting in uh, 1913. Uh, this is a 1913 Model T. Uh, it's all original. Uh, it's towing a 1913 Earl travel trailer made in California thought to be by Guinness Book of Records is the oldest uh, factory built travel trailer in the in the country. I oh, we're doing a that. And next to it, this is a, a 1915 Model T uh, pickup and it, the bed was so small that you couldn't sleep in it. So this guy came up with what was called a telescoping apartment. And the telescoping apartment actually was a triple slide out because it, it, it slid out from inside the bed and then both sides opened up each way. And uh, it cost $100 in 1916. Uh, Pierce Arrow, which was a very high end, it was higher end than a Cadillac in the day. And they made cars and they started to make motorhomes in 28. Stock market crashed in 29. They'd only built three. This is the only one I know that's still in existence. We know one burned up. It's gone. I don't know where the other one is, but. Uh, this is probably the most valuable one uh, that we have in the collection. Mae West was a movie star. I don't know if you ever heard of her or not, but. In the United States, Mae West was one of the early movie stars. She was in vaudeville, and Paramount Studios wanted her to uh, be in the movies, and she said no, she didn't want to be out on the set. So they actually converted this uh, truck into her uh, dressing room so she could be out on the set and have her own dressing room. So These two are kind of interesting. Uh, that Bolus Road Chief was, uh, I call it, the front runner to the Airstream. At the time he built the Bolus Road Chief, Airstream had a torpedo-looking uh, travel trailer with masonite sidewalls instead of aircraft design. But Wally Byam actually was a sales manager or at least a sales lot for him. And when Bolus stopped making them, uh, that's where he went to Airstream and the very first airstreams were like this, where you actually entered over the tongue. And so uh, that was really interesting. The other interesting thing is he was one of the engineers that built the Spirit of St. Louis. Okay. Charles Lindbergh is who flew the Spirit of St. Louis across the ocean. And this was his personal unit. So if you look in there, you'll see we don't have these lighted, but You'll see uh, he had an altimeter in his uh, travel trailer. <laughs> this uh, motorhome, it was called a house car back in 37. Roy Hunt, was a, he was a cinematographer, and uh, this was his idea of what a motorhome should look like. 
And uh, it's it's kind of interesting because uh, some of the things that they did back then, like the step, nobody today uses this step. And it, I mean, it is a solid step. They now they slide out and so forth. No one's ever copied that. And and that this was uh, what eighty, almost ninety years ago. <laughs> Originally, it was called a tent camper, but Gene Vesley in in Michigan, Lapeer, Michigan made it so that it's there's no canvas. It was all fold up, pop up. And uh, at one time, he was producing a hundred of these a day in his factory. You're looking at a road truck there. That's Canada. <laughs> yep. It took me uh, 12 years, 11 years to get a, a unit in here from from Canada, and it, it instead of coming from the factory, it came from uh, uh, an owner. GMC, GMC got into the business for five years back in the 70s, and the, what you're looking at here is a 77. The one right behind it is a 73. The one behind it's all original. This is an upgrade, a $500,000 upgrade. And once they got it done, uh, the gentleman had a stroke and could never drive it, and his wife didn't like it, so they donated it to the museum. Never used it. Uh, this unit here was uh, actually two of a kind. It was an engineer, and he, uh, he only built two. This is the larger of the two, and uh, it never was a production unit. The, the new conference center that's not completed. Now you're on the other side of the RVs. So this is uh, 36,000. No, it's all free span, no posts, no nothing. When these go back in the museum, then this is where the show will be next year. Thank you very much for meeting with us today. You bet. Um, great, great, to, great to see you here in uh, the RV capital of uh, of, the, of the U.S. And um, one of one of my our first questions is, uh, what products um, does Ericsal manufacture here in Elkhart? In Elkhart, um, several of our portfolio. Um, our Dicor Roofing Company is located here. Our Vixen Composite Panel and FRP business is here. Um, United Shade, our window covering business is in Elkhart. Um, Clear Vision Windows, Tempered Glass, and Doors is in Elkhart, uh, as is Elkhart Composites. Um, we also uh, have several distribution centers here locally um, where we take product from some of our other operations around the country, centralize those to support OEMs in the local area, um, and our Valerium Awnings business um, uh, is also located in Elkhart. I see. So, so, those, so those products that are manufactured here in Elkhart are are to better serve the local local OEMs. Correct. Yeah. You know, geographically, um, you know that just that made sense. Uh, yeah. Some of the businesses that I touched on were acquisitions that we made that were already in the local area. Um, so, therefore, organically, that occurred. I see. Yeah. Fair enough. You, you have a lot of products manufactured here. What can you tell me about um, the structure of the facility? Um, how many square feet? Um, how many employees there? Yeah, so uh, from a square foot standpoint, we have over half a million square feet, probably more than that um, locally, both with distribution and manufacturing. Um, that continues to increase as we've launched new products as well, okay. um, where we've needed additional space in order to, to manufacture or distribute those products. Um, so that's somewhat of a moving target. Uh, from a headcount standpoint, it varies based on the businesses in Elkhart. Um, um, but, you know, we're 500 plus strong in Elkhart. Um, we also have larger manufacturing facilities for air conditioning and suburban products, which are water heaters, furnaces, gas manifolds, steps, um, and cooking appliances in Dayton, Tennessee, where we also have a large headcount as well. I see. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, speaking of, uh, you mentioned new product. Uh, what what new product um, are you are you showcasing or are you presenting to 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 your um, 
OEMs for um, 2023 and 24? Yeah, so um, December of last year, we launched several several new product categories. Uh, I touched on one, baggage doors. Um, so that um, is a, a new piece of um, uh, business for us, which is uh, just commercialized now this new model year. Uh, so that's been a success story. I touched on Valerium awnings. Historically, we had not been in the awning business. Uh, now we are. Um, so that's based here in Elkhart. Um, also steps, so entrance door steps, okay. essentially out of suburban, um, gas manifold systems as well out of suburban. Um, and then, uh, we have a product showcase that's coming up here in the next couple of weeks, mid October, where we invite all of our OEM customers, um, okay. also, um, some of our aftermarket distributors to come in and see the latest and greatest. We'll be launching two new brands, um, at that time as well. Okay. In addition to those that I, I shared. Can you share those two new brands? I can, but I'd rather not okay. until out, uh, <laughs> to after the showcase. But uh, I, I have to ask my question my boss is here. So absolutely. I, I, I would ask the same question. That's a, that's a fair <laughs> okay, question. Fair enough. It, it seems um, it is quite a, a, an impressive, impressive collection of, of, of new uh, new products for, for this year. What's, uh, what was the concept be, uh, behind introducing these new products? So a lot of, and I've, I've shared this prior uh, prior interviews as well, is look, the, the market in the U.S. declined, and we knew that that was going to, to happen. Yeah. Um, I think as an industry, we were running so quickly where yeah. it was tough to focus on innovation um, through, you know, the post-pandemic surge. Yeah. So um, once we saw that decline, we refocused our efforts on product innovation, but tweaked it in the sense of looking at what our core competencies are within our business um, and how can we launch products that, um, while they may be in the marketplace today, um, they fit our core competencies operationally and what we do. So an example would be baggage doors, you know, manufacturing a, a glass window where we bend aluminum all day. Um, there's a lot of synergies between that and a window. Uh, in, a, in a baggage door. Um, so you're replacing the glass with an FRP, a core material, et cetera. So um, they weren't real stretches for us in order to, from a product segment standpoint, uh, we just had to focus the resources in the right areas to bring those to market. See, makes a lot of sense what you said in, in regard to kind of forecasting uh, a little bit of a downturn in, in the RV industry, given like the huge influx during right. during the pandemic. Um, that, that, that's good. That's a, probably took a, a lot of thought. It's nice to see that you're not, you know, was it a far reach for you guys? Um, uh, do you feel these new products meet current trends in, in demands is from your, from your OEMs? And yeah, I think they, they, they meet current trends. Um, I, I think, uh, in those market segments also that we entered, there was a need to have additional suppliers in those spaces. Okay. Um, yeah. you know, customers had shared that information with us very vocally that they had asked that we enter those spaces. Um, you know, the next step now that the first line of product has entered the market is now how do we truly innovate and make that, you know, substantially different or bring more value to the end consumer? Um, that's that second wave of product innovation right. that we're focused on now. Good answer. Yeah. I, I was kind of curious about that myself. Um, so speaking of, of kind of the, the market slowing, um, don't mean to emphasize too much on that, but um, do you feel that will affect uh, the markets in Europe as well as, say, other countries too, or, or mainly Europe? Yeah, well, you know, I, I think I've always looked at the European market being very different from, yeah. from uh, the U.S. market, both, you know, from the type of product produced uh, to the end consumer, what they're what their wants and needs are versus the U.S. consumer. Look, I think globally there's still challenges, obviously, in sure. Europe and both in the United States, and with those challenges um, can dictate what our market does. You know, in the end, this is still uh, a discretionary spend item, and um, mm -hmm. if there's some uncertainty, regardless of what's driving that uncertainty, I think that can lead to some um, hesitations, uh, perhaps. But look, if you, if you look at our industry historically, this is not something new. You know, it's always historically been somewhat cyclical. 
Um, what I'm really encouraged about is over the last two to three years, the first time new buyers that have entered our market, mm -hmm. they're now utilizing these vehicles in order to build memories with their families. Um, and I think that's very exciting, which gives us truly a springboard to future growth to surpass what we've done historically. Um, so I, I see this as more just of a you know, a, a rightening, um, perhaps, or stabilization. I don't see this both in the European market and the U.S. market as, uh, as anything more than that. Um, and I do anticipate things growing back, um, you know, consistently um, over the next few years. Okay. okay. Interesting. And uh, speaking speaking of the next few years, um, what's, what's your forecast on uh, the RV industry in the next five years? So the RV Industry Association always publishes, um, uh, you know, what they believe will happen, you know, in the coming 12-month period, uh, the future year. If you look at raw data based on the cyclical nature, sure. um, you would anticipate that from 2023 on a go forward, our industry would start to increase uh, at least wholesale shipment numbers consistently like they've done in other periods yeah. before. Okay. So um, the data proves that, the data shows that, and um, you know, with that, that's what we're building our business to. Nice. I, th I think a lot of you know, industries where, where it's a, like a secondary kind of necessity um, kind of sees that cycle as well, whether, whether it's, you know, out outdoor motorsports or boating, you, you know, when the market's great, everyone buys all the toys they like, and I think the RV industry is no different. Yeah, it, the data the data shows that, yeah. right? As I said, though, I think the caveat right now is the upside being that new first time buyer that has entered the market is now you know utilizing these vehicles sure. uh, to build memories that perhaps once they didn't um, have an inclination to do that, and so that's where I think our industry truly has upside. Okay, just one last question. Uh, when we were talking about your products and said to better kind of reach your your OEMs and and, and other partners. Uh, well, what special incentives um, do you have besides the Elkhart Open House that you, that you kind of promote and share what you're offering for, for the new, new year? Yeah, so, um, you know, locally in Elkhart and even some of our outside areas, um, we have a lot of salespeople that are on the ground every single day. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with Elkhart being, you know, the center of the universe, so to speak, mm -hmm. in the U.S., yeah. um, and, and with the majority of our OEM customers centrally located here, but also all of our competitors located here as well, um, you know, Elkhart is a, is a hotbed of activity every single day. Yeah. Um, and uh, fast forward and look at the product showcase that I touched on earlier. That's something that we've done now for over a decade and it's continued to scale. So that's a great opportunity for us to showcase all things new to our customers. We also participate in a lot of RV industry association events. We also partner with our distributors into the aftermarket on a lot of their events. Um, we're also doing um, um, some Overlander Expo activities that is is new to us, but uh, we see that as a, a growth market um, where we're starting to expand there. We also participate in retail shows. Um, so... You know, we're, we focus a lot where our customers are and our customers are, are, are numerous and all have different expectations and all have different uh, ideas of where they want to see our product. And we try and make sure that we, we are there where they need us to be. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they're happy about that and they're probably looking forward to seeing what you guys have to offer for 2024. Yeah, and we're, we're thankful for them. Um, that's why we get up every day and do what we do is to uh, make sure that we provide products that... Um, you know, they remember and want to be part of. Great. Well, thank you very much for your time and uh, thanks for sharing your thoughts. Hey, thanks so much. Sure. Hi, I'm Joel Digis from AMA USA. Uh, AMA is a global international manufacturing company specializing in uh, composite materials. Uh, we have a quite an extensive assortment of products in our offering. Uh, we do uh, vacuum form products, we do injection molding, and the most interesting thing you'll find in our booth at the show here today is our lightweight reinforced thermoplastics, and that's a headliner that goes into an Anco tractor. My name is Brian Bergen. I'm the product manager in Bristol, Indiana. I'm part of the Dexter Axel group. 
uh, with Dexter Event and Doors. Today I'd like to show you some of our latest products. This is our Venadome product. It's uh, all plastic, uh, 12 volt and manual Venadomes. It has the easy left feature, which you can raise and lower the vent to maximize different heights. 12 volt fan on this one, manual on that one. Comes with clear cover or smoke cover. This is another one of our new products. This is uh, a range hood cover. It's a one piece stamped uh, range hood cover. It comes either with a ducted or non-ducted unit. It's 12 volts, uh, has a fan and light. It's all one piece steel with a uh, removable filter. We also have a full line of uh, exterior vents for our fans. This is a uh, B2111 and B2250 uh, vents for the range hoods. Uh, we also offer a full line of of doors. This is our uh, 5000 series uh, RV door, typical uh, window, uh, 12 by 22 frameless window. All of our doors are made with a steel style that goes all the way around the door to protect the frame and has an extruded aluminum frame on the outside. Uh, we also have a a continuous hinge where the old one in the industry has a continuous hinge all the way down on the door for extra strength. Uh, we offer these with standard travel trailer locks or a motorized uh, lock. We also have uh, screen doors. Uh, we have an optional uh, handle for your screen doors, slider. The rot of them and call that deer and it or out button on it. Standard screen door. So my name is Brett Clark. I am a business development manager for RVO at Tometic. And uh, this is our showroom here in Elkhart, Indiana. And so we're gonna talk about some of the new products that we have uh, introduced this spring that will uh, start in the, actually will be available this spring, but we're showing them this fall. So the first one is, is our brand new uh, Fresh Jet Low Profile. This is an eight inch tall air conditioner. As you can see, it has a exterior LED light as well as this is the non-ducted version. So LED light on the ADB as well, 48 volt. And then with our acquisition of GoPower, um, we are presenting a complete GoPower pre-wired, pre-built panel that an OEM can install right out of the box, ready to go. And then on the bottom, you'll see three 300 amp hour lithium batteries, which are brand new to go power. So basically, uh, if you add solar panels, so with a small unit, you're looking at six panels. Uh, with a large fifth wheel, you're looking at probably 15 total solar panels and you could be completely off the grid, completely self-sufficient, no more generator needed uh, with an AC that is also a heat pump. This is 10,000 BTU, 3,000 watts, and it's super quiet. So along with that, uh, we have our 12 volt air conditioner. This is a, uh, created for the truck market but uh, we've had great success with this in the van, the B van market. So it has an ADB built in and it is literally, uh, it's not running now, but uh, 12 volt power completely. 
Uh, this is about 6,000 BTU. And so more and more people are asking about solar and solar power. So we have to give them air conditioning uh, that runs off of solar. This is our entry level, uh, 110 volt, brand new, fresh jet. Uh, comes in a 13.5 and a 15. And what we're showing here is uh, this is controls built in. And we are promoting that we get away from the standard wire and go to a Cat5 communication wire between the AC and the thermostat. So a lot cleaner communication, uh, a lot better experience for the customer. <laughs> Typically, we have uh, a lot of other things in the showroom, but refrigeration is another one that we've uh, kind of converted to. As you can see, one of the original Dometic refrigerators built in Sweden from 1950, 1960. And then here's the gas absorption that we build today in Mexico. And then the industry, again, with solar power and power storage with batteries, uh, Dometic has transitioned as well into a 12-volt product. So a lot more residential. Drawdown time is a couple of hours, where this could be four to six hours. And you get more space. So this is an eight cube, but this is an eight cube. And then this fits this cutout, but these are 10 cube. So this is our new black version. No more wire shelves, obviously, because we don't need to move air to cool. So again, as residential as you can see at home with glass trays, clear crispers, clear shelves. And then a little sneak peek of something that's pretty neat. Dometic makes center console refrigeration for Toyota, Chevrolet, GMC, Ford. Very easy to install. It plugs into a lighter. Um, it's got two USB ports so you can charge your phone as you're driving. This is my wife's favorite thing. I have a pickup truck She'll put some waters in there and a couple snacks as we head out for a weekend trip. And uh, so, again, we don't make just things for RVs. We make a lot of things for truck. We make things for John Deere refrigeration. So appreciate you stopping by for the tour. All right, so I'm Ken Ritchie, the uh, North American RV segment manager for Eversbacher. And so this is our new entry, a new 120 volt uh, rooftop air conditioner, low profile, quiet operation, uh, easy start. Uh, uh, it'll also have a heat pump, lighting on it. Uh, so that should be available April of 2024. So this is our mo most popular item for the Class B motorhome market. It's a hydraulic heater, so we can uh, Superheat, instant hot um, uh, glycol mixture. And then you can run that mixture into uh, hot air exchangers for hot air in the unit. Or you can run them through a plate exchanger to superheat instant hot water for your shower or sink. This is our standard we've had for years and years, the, uh, the Airtronic. So just simply, again, it's using... Uh, pulling diesel fuel or gasoline right out of your tank, uh, exhausting out the bottom, and you can have all the hot air you want into your, into your RV. Uh, this updated version gives you automatic altitude adjustment, so you can go up to uh, 18,000 feet, go skiing, go into the mountains, and, uh, and have flawless operation on that. And then our newest... Uh, entries as we get ready for the uh, electronic vehicle market. So these are uh, high voltage uh, fluid heaters. Same principle as before, we can superheat fluid to get you hot air or hot water. Uh, these operate you know, from three, 350 volts or more. 
And then this latest, uh, not yet released, uh, this is an electric heater and it's modular. So you can actually take it apart and, you know, use an air heater. You can add in a fluid heater to, you know, get your hot water um, in different functions. And it's got uh, a whole bunch of different ways to mount it. So the idea behind this is you can mount multiples in a vehicle in any space you want to put some quick 12 volt heat. Obviously, we're the largest chassis manufacturer in the North American RV industry. Um, so we built this chassis. We build, uh, we we can build up to 3,000 chassis a day. Um, typically, uh, towable chassis. Let's just be sure to say that we don't build motorized chassis. But uh, this particular chassis was uh, custom outfit with some new products uh, that we're we've launched over the last. A uh, couple months and some some products that have not yet launched but are very close to launch. Um, so I'll go over uh, just kind of walk around here. This is a brand new suspension system. We're calling it our, our our touring edition independent suspension. So if you are familiar with the uh, standard axle uh, running gear package on a trailer. Um, You'll notice something very different about this, that uh, there's no torsion, there's no spring. It's uh, built on a completely new suspension system using uh, uh, these coil springs as the, the dampening agent. So I, I believe on a European caravan, uh, primarily torsion uh, is, is what they're used for, for the axle system there. So we've, we've kind of taken some ideas from the past and some current ideas and incorporated some shocks and um, there is a major OEM that is going to be uh, bringing this product on over the next uh, couple months. We're really excited about that. We've had this on the test track for many, many, many miles. Um, the, the test data that we're getting back is very positive. Um, it provides a really smooth ride. Uh, so we're really excited about this. And it kind of came from the idea... I'll just walk you over here. Sorry, we're going to have to. We we actually introduced the original independent suspension system, um, Ember, which is, this is an Ember RV, uh, incorporated this suspension system on their uh, first models. And you can get down under there. You can kind of see that is an, an axle-less uh, suspension. Um, each wheel is independent. That's why I call it independent suspension. Uh, the, the concept of an independent suspension has been around for a really, really long time, but um, in this industry, it's never become really mainstream. You can get some aftermarket things put on. I'm going to have to rip axles off, but this is the first one of the first mainstream versions of it. Been really, really well. Um, the guys that like to go off-road love this system because it's kind of like having an off-road vehicle um, with each wheel kind of operating independently from each other. So that's kind of how the the touring edition was was born. What if we took the con concept of the original independent suspension and made um, more of a uh, a system for the masses, um, for big big fifth wheels and travel trailers. Um, so I'll kind of I'll go ahead and move on to the the leveling system. Um, this is a six point leveling system hydraulic um, called Titan leveling systems. So we came out with the first automatic leveling system for the, for the total market around 2009. It was called Level Up. And, you know, really nobody thought that a 
anyone would pay for a automatic hydraulic leveling system for a for a trailer, and uh, we proved them wrong because you know we we do over three hundred leveling systems packages a day, and that includes the hydraulic pump that you see over there, and all the electronics. The Titan leveling system's got a, uh, a couple cool new features as compared to the old system. As you can see, there's only uh, two points in which the hydraulic hoses go into the um, into the cylinder. Redesigned cylinder, very cool looking, very uh, updated, modern looking, new foot pad. Um, and, and what I can't show you right now is a, a completely upgraded um, interface that you can do on your phone or on, uh, on a touchpad. Um, a lot of a lot of cool new innovations there, but um, just the look and feel. And after the interview, I'll I'll go show you what the old jack looks like. You'll see it. It looks it just looks a lot nicer. Um, so that's uh, that's actually on the market right now. That's been on the market for about five months. Um, got a lot of positive uh, feedback on that. It's got lights underneath, so when the jacks are coming down, it illuminates the the ground below it. Um, just to all it out, we, we challenged the team to come up with a more innovative, better looking system really hadn't changed in a decade. And this is what we came up with. So we're really proud of that one. This is our latest offering in uh, fifth wheel pin boxes, uh, brand of the current name. And this is the helix. This is the fifth wheel version. We, we will also have a gooseneck version that will attach to a gooseneck coupler, which a lot of our viewers, um, especially the, the pull fifth wheels are really looking for a gooseneck version. Um, and before now we never really had one because it will void the chassis warranty, but with our gooseneck version, it won't void the chassis warranty. And, um, it's, it's, it's what a lot of people are looking for today. You know, the difference is with a gooseneck coupler, you don't have to have a, a big fifth wheel hitch in your, in your truck bed that frees up your truck bed. You can throw more stuff in there along for the ride, but, Outside of that, the um, you can see the we've used the coil spring technology integrated that you saw in the Touring Edition uh, axle package and incorporated into the pin box with a shock. Um, again, we've had this thing on the test track a lot. Uh, it's um, it's performed really smoothly. We're really excited about you know possibly this being the uh, the thing that solves everyone's problem, which is chucking, bouncing, joy, you know, all the things that go along with. Um, towing a fifth wheel so brand new pin box pretty cool we're excited about that um rv steps are because our, our our units are so much larger than the the caravans in europe um we came out with what we call the solid step, which I can show you when we go over there uh, quite a while ago. Um, this is a step that actually folds up into the door. Um, you probably saw hundreds and hundreds of RVs over there that, that have the, the step that folds up into the door. Um, it's, been, it's been great, but we, again, we challenge ourselves. Well, what, what, what can we do better? Um, we still have a lot of older campers that's really hard for them to get up and down the steps. The original steps that fold out, you know, get all sorts of complaints about that. But so we, we kind of um, invented this system here that slides under the chassis. So this now frees up a lot of space around that door. It's, it's a little bit easier install because it's installed at the time that the chassis is manufactured. And you can see it's, it's huge. I mean, nobody nobody's going to complain about footing and, and stability on this thing. It's it's just that big. So pretty excited about this. And I'll get it back. I don't. Pretty cool product. This guy here, and I'm not going to operate it because um, we're just going to leave it up. But this is a. This is a ramp door for a toy hauler, but it's it's powered. So virtually every every ramp door that you'll see out in the open house has a has a, a manual version. You unlock the um, the handles and you you slowly lift it down 
we incorporated um, there. There are actually cables. Let's see out here. There, there, there are cables located inside the channel of this door that slowly lower the door down. But also we have a, a power version that you can raise and lower the door using power. Really, that has not been adopted a whole lot in this industry for one reason or the other. And we're trying to, you know, get with the times and have everything offered in power. So, yeah, you'll start seeing in the uh, American RV market, you'll, you'll, you'll start seeing uh, quite a bit of uh, acrylic windows. Uh, this is manufactured by our polyplastic division in the Netherlands. Um, you know, I'd say five years ago, uh, a lot of people were talking about acrylic plastic windows. Um, nobody was really doing it because there really, really wasn't a, a, a true want for that. But I'd say in the last, um, the last two years, uh, acrylic windows have really taken off. There's, um, there's going to be a, you'll out there at the open house, you'll see quite a few manufacturers that are incorporating the, the our, our polyplastic window. Um, the, uh, the RV that you see over here, um, this is manufactured by Ember RV, one of the new OE startups here. They've, they've really taken to this, um, Outside of weight savings, obviously that's the biggest thing. There, there's just an aesthetic to it that makes it look um, quite a bit different, makes it stand out from a lot of the other units. Um, but you can see that this is outfitted with those windows. So this display here kind of outlines all of our, our one control connectivity um, onboard electronics. Um, one control basically started out, call it a decade ago with, I want to operate my slides and I want to operate my lights and, and maybe my leveling system with a roll control. Well, that's grown into kind of an ecosystem of products, right? So, uh, we've built one control, um, you know, because Lippert builds not just the components that you see here. We actually build the boards and the brains behind everything too. So we're completely vertically integrated when it comes to all the different things that go into the one control ecosystem. And uh, by the way, we design our boards. We're, we're, we're allowed to just add more and more different products into the ecosystem, which is pretty cool. We've got um, water sensors wind sensors for the awning. So if the wind blows against the awning, um, the awning will retract back in. Uh, camera systems. Um, we've got uh, tire pressure monitor systems, uh, TPMS. We've just introduced a Bluetooth door lock. Um, we're going to introduce another Bluetooth system for doors um, in, in just a little bit. It's going to be really cool. You'll, being from Europe, you'll, you'll notice a, we've borrowed a lot of the aesthetics um, from Europe, that's a pretty cool looking door handle. A lot of the European kind of influence is coming to a lot of our designs. Um, obviously, we, we manufacture a ton of doors uh, for the European caravanning market and in, in our um, Florence based operations. So you're, you're going to see a lot of um, <laughs> Italian inspired uh, products coming, coming to the States. Um, but beyond touch panels, which as much as people like their phones, they want to touch buttons. Um, so we've we've kind of upgraded and customized uh, different touch panels for different price points, uh, integrating our one control system, which I think these are beautiful. You let's go in a lot of the RVs and you see the old school uh, on off switches, right? So maybe kind of one of the coolest things though that we're doing, we're integrating our analog brake system into the one control ecosystem. So um, this doesn't look like much, but, uh, we've kind of introduced about a year ago, year ago, plus a, um, a true analog brake system for travel trailers and fifth wheels. And, um, what this does is exactly what you, uh, but anybody that knows anything about braking systems, uh, understands it will, uh, it acts just like a automotive analog brake system. So really adds a safety value to the trailer when you're traveling. You know, you get someone that 
um, swerves in front of you and you have to make an emergency braking situation, the trailer just tracks right behind you. Uh, we've got tons and tons of video on this online, tons and tons of testimonials um, from, uh, from um, analog brake system customers that have been in emergency situations. It's, it's night and day. Um, we also have a sway control, electronic sway control, which you're very familiar with in Europe, um, integrated into the analog brake system. So it's not only it's not only analog brakes, but it's also sway control as well. Um, probably the thing we're most proud of. Um, so yeah, that is uh, we're we're constantly thinking about more products to add to the ecosystem. Um, LP tank sensors for your gas, temperature sensors uh, for your refrigerators. Say you. Uh, you think your refrigerator's on and it goes off and this will alert your phone that temperature in your fridge gets below whatever you set. So really trying to make that smart RV concept come to life. Of course, you can control my awnings. I can control my patio lighting. I can turn all the lights on. I can turn all the lights off. I can change the lights to different colors <laughs> if, that, if that's your thing. Um, slide outs come in and out. Um, and then our leveling system I think it's one, two, three, four, I hope. No, got the pin wrong. Don't film that. Uh, oh, it's five, two, four, one. I should just read. But this is our uh, our new, I, I kind of talked about over there, our, our new simplified um, leveling system uh, controls for the Titan leveling system that I showed you earlier. Really simple. There's going to be a blackout mode so that if it's nighttime, you know, everything's black. It's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it, it'll do everything. And, and every single one of these functions is, a, is available on the app. So you can download the One Control app and do everything from your phone if that's what you want to do. I uh, would like to address you, and I'm very thankful that I get the chance here to uh, be on the stage and to be here and celebrate an year's anniversary. The Truma Corp has an outstanding level of performance, I would say, towards the customers. To maintain such a high level of performance, a common purpose and a set of values must be the foundation. This is as true today as it was when my grandfather, Philip Christ, started Truma. I said that in the movie before, so from the beginning, he set the foundation based on respect for others, on dependability and on humility. And I see these values reflected in the team here. And what makes me really proud is that you made it your own for example, um, when I see on LinkedIn about your cleanup projects, it really it makes me proud and I'm very inspired um, by how you take your own spin uh, on these values that, that my grandfather and my family represents. So I'm very proud of it. I thank all of you for helping make Truman North America the success it is today and being such excellent stewards of my family's legacy. And of course, Many thanks go to our manufacturing and dealer partners. We would not be here and where we are today without our customers, who we have always perceived as partners, as mentioned many times already. In the very beginning, my grandfather was a customer himself. He was a language teacher in post-war Munich, and a lack of re reliable electricity made teaching, even in classes, very difficult especially when it got dark outside. When he discovered no one was selling LPG-powered lamps, he developed one because he needed one. LPG was the only thing that was available 24-7. He learned quickly that he was not the only one in need of this invention, and so he pivoted his business from school to lamps and continued to grow his business in this way, recognizing a need and fulfilling it. One of Truba's most successful systems was developed based on that very thought process. 30 years ago, well, 30 years ago, Truma had already established itself as the industry leader in RV heating and hot water, but European manufacturing partners came with a special re request. They wanted to use our systems, but in smaller RVs, and they didn't have the space to fit two appliances. So we worked with the customers to develop a solution and the result was industry's first two-in-one furnace and water heater. At that time, it was called the Truma C, uh, which was short for combination heater. 
And this turned out to be the company as we know it today. That commitment to our customers and the RV industry is what has made us so successful. We understand the manufacturing processes and we are willing to tackle new challenges together. When you hear Gerhard or any of the team members refer to the customers as partners, it is because we all share the common goal of helping the end user enjoy a simply better camping experience. Our vision is to pioneer worldwide leading solutions for unforgettable times outdoors. Those of you here in the room and many others who were unable to attend have made the last decade one of these unforgettable experiences. I am excited for what the future will bring and the new heights that collaborating with our partners and meeting their needs will allow us to reach. Once again, my heartfelt congratulations to the North American team on 10 successful years and my unending gratitude for the partnerships we have built along the way. This is amazing. Uh, if someone would have told me 10 years ago that I would be standing here today and talk in front of so many important people from the industry, I would have said, I would have said don't use so many drugs. <laughs> we are here to celebrate a milestone, 10 years of doing business in North America. As many of you know, Truma was founded in 1949 after President Harry S. Truman implemented the Marshall Plan for economic recovery after World War II, making it possible for Germany to become industrialist. Our founder, Philip Kreis, named the company after President Truman, thus linking the US and Truma from that point forward. And here you can see a letter from President Truman giving Philip Kreis permission to name Truma after him. And we still have this letter in our museum in Germany, and we are very proud of that. Truma started out manufacturing gas engines Through innovation, engineering, and persistence, the company grew and evolved to become the leading supplier of RV furnaces, water heaters, air conditioners, and many other RV systems in Europe. It was the tenacity thoughtfulness, and work ethic that sparked the idea of bringing Truma Systems to North America. When we made the decision to bring Truma Systems to US and Canada, we believed that there was room for a quality supply. We knew, based on our experience in Europe, <laughs> that our systems would appeal to higher RV manufacturers and RV owners. Yet, we didn't just jump into this market. We did our own work, conducted a market study, and interviewed manufacturers, dealers, and end users. We found that indeed there was space for a quality supplier in the appliance area. At that time, we, were frequently, we frequently heard that no matter if you bought a $25,000 travel trailer or a $500,000 motor home, the appliances were still all the same. In fact, many were still using 1970s and 1980s technology, and I believe many still did still do, do today. However, we also learned that people who spend that much money on high-end RVs and often use their RV year-round expect quality, better quality systems on board, whether facing a cold for a night or a long hot summer stay, those customers want to enjoy the outdoor lifestyle without compromising comfort. In addition, they expect uncompromising service. Long wait times are not acceptable. Reliable, knowledgeable, and convenient service is a must. So we asked ourselves several key questions. What if we brought highly reliable appliances to the market? Would the market be interested in furnaces and water heaters which were compact, lightweight, space-saving, and extremely efficient? Would manufacturers buy an air conditioner that was as quiet as it was cooling? We were confident Truma could meet the industry's expectations and demands when it came to high-quality, well-built systems with exceptional service. At Truma, we develop systems for end users. Our products are for people who want to spend time together traveling in an RV, enjoying the outdoors, or seeing the country. Those people do not want to spend their trip stuck in the dealership, waiting for the water heater or AC to be fixed. 
They want to enjoy time with friends and loved ones without spending more money to keep the RV comfortable. So we introduced the two Mahakobo water heaters specifically to the North American market. We offer Truma Vary Heat, a compact and silent furnace. And we certified Truma Combi, the original two-in-one furnace and water heat, which, by the way, is not only the market leader in Europe, but Combi has achieved its own status in America as others try to imitate and replicate its greatness. With each new Truma system, such as our Aventad air conditioner, we, click, we quickly learned that many OEMs are dedicated to quality above price. OEMs like those here today are willing to invest in better systems to keep customers happy and brand loyal. We are proud of the partnerships we have developed with OEMs throughout the industry. Someone recently asked what it means to be a quality supplier in the RV industry. I told him at Truman, we don't think of ourselves as suppliers or vendors. We strive to be partners with manufacturers, dealers, and end consumers. We are your partner from start to finish. The total value of Truma partnership can be found beyond our products. It is the way we develop our systems, talking with our OEM partners, testing new ideas, auditing installations, and ensuring that we are achieving the absolute best in quality. It is in our approach to service, providing technical trainings for dealers and meeting the needs of end consumers with our mobile service technicians. Allow me to introduce Truma Sapphire, an under the bench air condition systems system with heating capability. Truma Sapphire is designed to create a sleek look by removing the air conditioner from the roof of an RV and elimin eliminating the needs for large wall cutouts. Sapphire recently received certification and is currently being tested in the US. We are looking forward to offering Sapphire air condition in early 2024. Also on the near horizon are new versions of Truma Combi. Truma, in 2024, Truma will offer a new version of the Truma Combi that will address the desire for one fuel source and off-grid capabilities. In addition to those systems, we are excited for the new Alde 3030, which offers hydronic heat and continuous hot water. As many as of you know, our sister brand Alde came to North America in 2012. Then four years ago, we moved Alde from the West Coast here to Elkhart. The Alde 3030 will be available in the US early next year. From a team standpoint, we are increasing the talent and focus of our engineering team in the US. The engineering team will work together with business development, sales, and all of you to continue developing North America products here in North America. We will also continue building onto our technical service team with an increased number of dealer trainings and more mobile technicians across the country to better serve our end consumers. To last in any industry, you first must build a strong foundation. Together we did that. By staying true to our values of courage, adaptability, and connectedness, we have created partnerships where we can continue to put the customer first. Day in and day out, we demonstrate that our tagline is more than just marketing flow. Everything we do, build, say, and offer must be simply better. That is the foundation we have built and it is built to last. Whatever the next 10 years hold, we are excited to face them with each of you. Thank you very much again for joining today. Another great video. Hi, I'm Lance Boggs. I'm the RV sales manager for Vitra Frigo America. We're here at the RV open house in Elkhart, Indiana at the RV Hall of Fame we're featuring a couple of new products. The first here is a three cubic foot refrigerator, our Slim 90M that we are introducing this year. It's already in production in Airstream and Road Trek models and being used all around the world. It is a three cubic foot refrigerator freezer with a new state of the art crisper bin. 
And if you look at the design on the back here, it is contoured to fit inside of vans or other trailers where you might not have a straight up and down wall. And it does have an external cooling unit, which can be set up up to five feet away from the actual refrigerator. These are available now and in stock in Elkhart, Indiana. Early next year, we're also releasing a new line of V-Free Plus portable refrigerator freezers. These are AC-DC units, so you can set them up for either voltage. We're going to have a variety of sizes. This is a 40 liter. We're going to go up to 115 liters. There's going to be several upgrade options for this, such as a lithium ion battery, where you can actually run the unit not plugged in for up to six hours. And there's also, to make it ergonomic, a convenient carrying handle. And you can also can control it with your smartphone as well. Once again, these will be available probably at the end of Q1 2025. In addition, we also have our full line of RV and marine refrigerators that are available. Everything is CUL certified in stock at Elkhart, Indiana, and we sell direct through distribution and straight to OEM.